It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Jeff Jarvis is here. Matt Cutts is, too, from Google. And we're going to talk about all sorts of things, including, I think, a very interesting conversation about Larry Page's motivations. Why does he do what he does? We'll talk about it next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 314, recorded Wednesday, August 19th, 2015. No more wet napkins. This Week in Google is brought to you by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting software that's giving thousands of freelancers and small businesses the tools to save time billing and get paid faster. Try it free at freshbooks.com slash twig. And by LegalZoom. Protect your family with a last will or living trust today. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but can connect you with an independent attorney. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code TWIG in the referral box at checkout for your special discount. And by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and secure your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering This Week in Google listeners 10% off any featured SmartThings kit and free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twig and use the offer code twig at checkout. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we cover Google, Facebook, Twitter, the cloud, journalism, whatever anybody wants to talk about, because when you have a panel as good as we have on this show, you just let them go. Partly that's Jeff Jarvis's fault. So I blame you, Professor Jarvis. Hey. City University hey. of New York. Hey. 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 Buzzmachine.com is his blog. That's the beginning of an intelligent conversation, eh? Hey. Hey. <laughs> there actually is a, I want to talk about journalism, but we'll do that in a little bit. Uh, and I'm so glad to have from the hey. from alphabet.com, abc.xyz, no, <laughs> Matt Cuts. Hello. Can I say again? Can I say formally of Google yet? Uh, no, no, I'm still at Google on leave. On leave from Google, Google. officially. And it, you're on leave from Google, not Alphabet. Am I right? Uh, that's right. Google is the search part. Alphabet is not the search part. Right. Everything <laughs> but. Oh, that makes sense. Since uh, since Jeff, uh, we should say uh, Matt uh, Cuts is always welcome here. We love Matt. He does not speak for Google, but. He uh, has is was an early Google employee for a long time. Uh, did two things of great import. One is uh, keep the spam out of Google search results. That was his day job. And by night, he did the great webmaster videos at Webmaster Tools. Um, they've changed those a little bit, haven't they? Since your since your leave, they've changed them a little bit, but uh, they're still doing some pretty neat stuff. For example, uh, they've been working on something called uh, hashtag No Hacked or something like that to help webmasters make sure that their site is secure and you know they're not reusing passwords and stuff like that so there's there's actually some some great new stuff that they've just pushed out recently so. nice that's great so I when I was at VidCon I, I met some of the guys who handle that channel on YouTube and I said oh yeah I'm on you know I'm on uh, Twig regularly with Matt Cutts it was like it was like I said Vigor <laughs> oh, ah, they love you they love the Matt uh, who doesn't everybody loves Matt Cutts in fact, I was does. shocked that you weren't made CEO, but that's I, me. I mentioned you today teaching <laughs> our whole new class, in fact, Matt. Uh, what do you think? You know, it, we talked a lot obsessively last week about Alphabet uh, because that had just happened on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm curious what you think as, a, as somebody who works at Google um, and knows Larry, of course. Um, well, tell us what, why, what's going on? Well, I'll, I'll preface it again with this is just my personal take, but, you know, Larry is fantastic at seeing five-year trends, you know, and that's the sort of stuff that he's interested in, you know, moonshots, big bets, you know, he doesn't just want to come in and, and, you know, necessarily cross the T's and dot the I's. And so I think this new structure is kind of nice because Alphabet, you know, can concentrate on some of those moonshots. And yet Sundar, at the same time, be, by becoming CEO of Google, is recognized uh, and is able to, you know, help make sure that things work well. Employees are happy. 
You know, we can work on, you know, all kinds of th stuff all the way down to the nitty gritty details like uh, diversity or inclusiveness, stuff like that. And so that hopefully you get the best of both worlds. You get Larry able to think about how do we, you know, reinvent cities. And you also get Sundar who is able to, you know, work at that level, but is also happy to go down to the micro level details as well. That's my hope, at least. We'll see how it works out over time. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense in that light. Mm -hmm. Sundar is a great choice, right? I mean, he's... He's been just a superstar oh, yeah. for the last few years. Yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> and especially from, you know, his DNA of, you know, coming up from the Chrome world, I, I have a lot of faith that, you know, the open, federated, you know, decentralized web, he understands the importance of all of those things. And uh, whenever I've had any experiences with Sundar, you know, whenever there's been some problem or some feedback, he's always taken it very seriously. And so that gives me a lot of confidence you know, that he's going to keep trying to do the right thing and hopefully represent those old, old school Google values, you know, even as Google tackles whatever the next big set of challenges yeah. is. That's great to hear. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, making Sundar CEO is really a, one way of saying it's business as usual. I mean, it's not like you brought in Carly Fiorina to run the company, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, things are, are going pretty well at Google overall. Yeah. I, and it was funny because I did a 12-mile run this uh, this weekend, and I listened to This Week in Google the whole way, you know, because you had a long show a long last weekend. Show. And, uh, and I, I was nodding and laughing along. I was like, yeah, okay, they get it, you know. And, and, and it's kind of funny because I think last week, Leo, you said, well, this is Larry's chance to retire. And I don't think Larry wants to retire, but it might be indistinguishable from working on the big things that are fun to yeah. you that you don't have to do versus retirement. And so I don't, I, de I definitely hadn't thought of it in that sense. I don't think of it as a retirement at all, but it does free him up. So he doesn't have to go in and go to the, the weekly meeting right. about whatever subject he doesn't care about. And if he's excited to tackle the next big challenge, then that's good for everybody and hopefully good for society as well. well that's what I would say. I mean, if there are two people you want to have, have plenty of resources and plenty of time to focus on challenges, it'd be Larry and Sergey. I'm thrilled. And Sundar is uh, yeah. exactly the guy you would want to put in position to, for day-to-day -day operations. I think this is, uh, this this all works uh, very well. Ruth Porat is, is uh, great as well. I think you've got a good uh, hell of a good team, and it does make me think that this has probably been in the works for some time. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big smile from that, that guy. That is very good at silence. <laughs> Knows how to use silence as a tool. <laughs> silence can speak volumes. All right, let's talk about some new stuff from Google. Uh, you know, we'll talk about Project Sunroof. We'll talk about Google curing disease. We'll talk about Hangouts and its own site. But I got to say, the thing that most excites me is this new uh, Wi-Fi router. Yeah. <laughs> you ordered one, I assume. I immediately got on and ordered one. It was sold out for me at Google. I had to order it through Walmart. <laughs> Uh, when does this say, when does Walmart say you're going to, it's interesting because Google September did make 1. this available everywhere, including Amazon. Uh, it's called on hub and it, 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 I can't, I can't think of a more unlikely sudden announcement from Google yeah. than the $200 Wi-Fi router. And yet <laughs> when you read the specs, you realize, oh, this is the first AC router to really use some of these features of AC and, of course, hidden in here is the key, which is it supports Weave. And uh, that, is the, that is the mesh network that I think is going to be very important to the Google home automation play. So I'm surprised, though, it was that it's not, not like from Nest. It feels like this should be a Nest uh, product. But maybe it is. I don't know. Smooth I don't stream. think it's Nest. No. But, uh, but, yeah, it's... That's one of those things where they'll have to figure out the right branding. But right. my favorite feature is that it has a baker's dozen of antennas. So it literally Can has you believe 13 that? different antennas. 13 antennas. And so, yeah, there's... <laughs> go ahead. What I Well, there's just... The neat thing to me is normally when you have a Wi-Fi router, it reboots, it picks the channel that's the least congested, and then it stays with that channel until it reboots again. Right. <laughs> and that 13th, that extra antenna... It lets you scan, and every five minutes, if it finds a channel that's less congested, it will switch to that channel without you having to do anything. Is that not awesome? So it's always going to be looking for the most capacious channel to use for Wi-Fi. Gigabit Ethernet port on it, one WAN, one LAN. Uh, it's got a USB 3 port on it, which is kind of intriguing. 
uh, when uh, they've got the uh, speaker built in. I don't know why you have a speaker and a router. I'm sure we'll find out. And an ambient light ring. In fact, what, what <laughs> consumer electronic device has a speaker and an ambient light ring and kind of looks like this? The Echo. I gotta that, wonder. So there was there was a story about the Echo, but but it doesn't seem to have any functionality that's anything close to the Echo. Currently, there's a lot right. of when you read the specs, there's a lot of no, <laughs> a lot of ready. You know, it's Weave I, I ready. It's 802.15.4 ready. It's Bluetooth smart ready. You got a feeling. What I really get the feeling of is that this is something ready for the future. Um. You use it to, you configure it with an app on your uh, Android or iOS uh, device. Um, I just, I feel like there's there's a lot here, by the way. Enjoy it with your Chromecast, Nest Cam, Nest Learning Thermostat, and your Nexus 6. Okay, I'll enjoy it with all of those uh, devices. I just feel like there's more to this. We haven't, uh, it's dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor. You don't normally, in commodity devices like routers, put fast processors. There's something going on right. with this one. And uh, and it's got, there's a lot of flash, you know, four gigabytes of flash mm -hmm. uh, memory. And um, so it does feel like it's ready to be a really, not just a great router today, but a great yeah. router tomorrow and next year. I, I will just say, though, I think it's only intended to be a router. For the for example, the speaker is three watts. So okay. you're not going to get, uh, you know, a lot of <laughs> just a volume out of that. But for example, maybe it could... Well, yeah, maybe it, or, or maybe it could send out some signals that uh, another device could hear oh. and then use that signal or something. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. So one problem is that it's set up to be to be in, in your room, and they made it cylindrical so you wouldn't put things on top of it, and it's meant to be out there. But, of course, everybody's connection is some, in some closet somewhere. Right behind me is my closet. Yeah. But you, they, want, they say hiding a router weakens its signal on hubs tidy cords and tucked away antennas mean you can leave it out in the open for the best possible coverage. It is a challenge. I have an air, it's going to replace my Airport Express, similarly expensive, uh, and kind of uh, well, attractive enough to leave out in the living room, but this will look a lot better. I'm a little worried, though, because I use, uh, I use other airports to extend it throughout the house. I'm worried I, about that, too. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work, but I'll give you, I'll give you a... The uh, way I look at it is, Googlers have big houses. That's right. <laughs> this is not made for people with small walk-up well, flats, my friends. <laughs> no, I know well, what you're saying. I think that's true, but it's probably also true that, you know, if I wouldn't be surprised if you could have multiple ones of these devices and have them work pretty well together. Yeah. You know, that yeah. seems like a, a pretty I might uh, buy nice another one. Case. I so, almost bought you know, two. Just on the presumption yeah. that Google would do that. Both both of them hardwired to the Ethernet? No. One is no. a repeater. So you could use one as a repeater. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you could I think you could you could do it that way, Jeff. You could do it connected to Ethernet on both and then they could probably talk to each other. Look at this. I've never seen this. It says limit reached. It doesn't say sold out. <laughs> it says limit reached. Mine said out of stock when I went there. Yeah, limit reached. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Comes in blue and black. I, of course, ordered blue because, well, if they're going to make it blue, I might as well make it buy a blue one. Um, so I did order it. I don't know when uh, when I'll get it. Uh, they. What all do you think it will do, Leo, in the next year? What What are the What are the, what well, are the I'm, I'm interested. The it has so many antennas. I'm wondering if it does uh, AC beam beam forming, which is one of the things that's very cool about 802.11 AC that. Uh, very few routers do, which is aim. Um, AC has built in this capability to kind of aim at uh, hooked up devices to beam form, target the beam, and then uh, as a result have a better performance. This 802... And they do... Go ahead, Matt. Sorry, they, they do talk about that. Do They do talk about the fact that you can designate one device, like a Wi-Fi device, and say, I want the best quality of service for this device. Right, yes. And so uh, that would be kind of nice, because if you're surfing on an iPad or whatever, you really want to prioritize that and not, you know, a firmware or you're re-downloading re all your apps on some phone that you're not using. So it's, it I think says, that's uh, nice. to provide an even stronger signal, a front-facing antenna 
uh, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean beam forming. Then I was curious about this. It says 802.12.5 ready. I thought, what is that? It's a standard. I looked it up because I'd never heard of it. Remember, 802.11 is what we're using for Wi-Fi. 802.15.4 specifies the... Matt, you're going to have to explain this. The physical layer and media access control for low-rate wireless personal area networks. It's a PAN. Z ah, Zigbee uses it. Uh, this is a yep. home automation spec. Mm -hmm. It can be used with six low WPAN and standard internet protocols to build a wireless embedded internet. I think that's probably part of Weave. Uh, and I would guess that it's for home automation. Or, or possibly Brillo. Uh, Brillo yeah, slash Brillo. Weave, right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. So I, it's kind of nice because it is designed to be pretty future proofed as far as I can tell. I know. I was really blown away. Um, it seems to me something, uh, I just, you know, I bought on faith basically. <laughs> it's what like, are you getting yours? Uh, that's a good <laughs> question. I, I thought I, I should look at, take it away from my screen for a second. I'm going to check my email. I, cause I thought I got an email that said it's on its way, but, but they said it wouldn't Ooh. be for a while. Right. Yeah. I think mine, mine says September one, I think. Well, that's pretty quick. You got yours at Walmart, which is bizarre. Very. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's. It sounds like it sold out at the Google store in like less than half an hour. And then I was checking it sold out at Amazon, Newegg, yeah. and Fry's. Yeah. So well, mine, mine arrives August 21, Friday. I also oh. like. Okay. Nice. Oh, great. Well, and it also sounds like uh, it's got a, a TPM, which is a trusted platform module. So, for example, with Chromebooks, there's a signed BIOS so that when you boot, you're you're sort of guaranteed that some malware or virus hasn't taken over your BIOS because it's cryptographically signed. Isn't that awesome? So you know you want that same level of security from your router as yeah. well. Yeah, and and you you I mean we're used to routers having to reboot whenever you make a change, yeah. and so it, it's designed to not have to reboot whenever you make a change as well. So mine says Aug October first through fifth. What? I'm I'm arrives by Friday August 21. And I yeah, 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 yeah. Friday August 21 August 21 is 3 days from now. I know. Well, you're going to have to tell us what you think. We need a review from you. Well, J Jake's not happy because Jake's basically the the sysadmin here. He's not happy? I believe it or not well, cuz cuz that means he, we, this is you know what it is. The family comes to him and says, "You do this. Yeah, we need you to do this." And then it's it's like volunteer work, right? <laughs> so I, I I I said I you know usually when gadgets come out I email them and I say, "Oh, you see this excitedly?" And he came back and said, "If it's not broke, don't fix it. We haven't <laughs> had any problems in five years." <laughs> well, no, that's true. But I, our uh, Wi-Fi drops a lot. We have lots of issues, uh, and I think it's been the router. So I'm just, I'm very hopeful. That, what kind of router do you have now? Uh, the high-end Apple Airport uh, Express, Airport, or yeah, Airport the, Extreme, I should say. The Airport Extreme. And yeah. it's, uh, it's the router I generally recommend. I mean, it's almost the same expense as this. I'm very intrigued by all of this. I feel like they, they this is, um, as often as the case with Google, this is not a product they intend to make a business out of. This is pointing the way to what a router should be. Does that make does that make sense, Matt? That that's kind of because there. I mean, there's no business here. They already ran out of them. <laughs> well, I think there can be a good business here. The uh, the thing to bear in mind is one way to understand how Google thinks about things is we're trying to make it easier for people to get on on the net, and that can be Chrome, which is a bet on the web. That can be app, uh, Android, which is a bet on apps. It can be Google Fiber, which is making it you know easier to get connectivity, and all of that stuff just kicks the you know gooses the competition a little bit and makes the market more competitive. So that's good for absolutely everybody, and and I think you know routers can be so much better so I, yeah. I absolutely hope that it's a huge hit i hope that google makes money and tp link which is the partner that google did with on this on the, for the hardware makes a lot of money as well but even more i hope that just routers in general realize hey you can raise the bar a lot more and is another version coming from asus i think oh did i see that somewhere oh i think i, think I saw that somewhere yeah yeah. Uh, I mean, what, you're right, Matt. What I love about it is that they took something that, that, that nobody likes, that doesn't really work, that has no glory, and said, this could be better. That's essentially a commodity yeah. product right now. That's it, the it is. But well, I imagine this, I, I would think this gets supplied with Google Fiber. Ah, uh, cool. interesting. Maybe that's why they but, have uh, it. 
you know, think about Gmail, right? You know, mail was thought of as a commodity product before right. Gmail came in with lots more storage and threaded conversation. So I, I think over and over again, if we can find something that we think is a, a better way to, to do it, then, you know, it's it's on the table. So. And Jeff, what you're saying about uh, fiber, that actually makes a lot of sense because from what I read, this was developed by the Chrome team and the team behind fiber. Uh, in conjunction. Uh, so, so maybe this I is what they of, were giving people, yeah. and now they said, hey, we really should probably make this. A, this you know, so, uh, Matt, clarify for me. This hardware business is kind of new for Google, although they've always made this stuff. You, you see this as, how does this fit into Google's game plan? I think this goes back to the Google Alphabet split. You know, Google, people think about as a search company, organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful. And that's a great, you know, that's ambitious enough for a very large number of people to work on. But Larry's ambitions are not limited to just information. You know, he's interested in energy. He's interested in transportation. He's interested in all kinds of different topics. And so Alphabet, I think, you know, th there was an article in the rundown about how uh, life sciences has been right. split out into alphabet as well. And so, uh, you know, whether it be hardware, hardware is a great lens because if you can do commodity hardware, you can really think about Project Aura. You know, the ability to have accelerometers and all of these components driven down by the prices of commodity phones means now you can do all kinds of crazy, weird, new, you know, hardware-related things simply because you're writing the curve that the phones are on. And so I, I think... For a long time, Google might have been reluctant to get into hardware because, you know, uh, it's difficult to do. And, you know, we did the Google search appliance and stuff, you know, more than a, de a decade ago. But um, I, at some point, you have to say, look, if you want to affect change, maybe you're working with partners, maybe you're doing it on your own. But hardware is a great way to start to take a step in that direction. So what devices do you wish Google would tackle next? <laughs> uh, well, I'll just say I posted on internal Google Plus, you know, the one that we use within the company recently, and I was like, man, I left my printer, you know, in this other place, and is there a good fax, printer, scanner, all-in-one that you can use cloud print and can just be on yeah. Wi-Fi and you don't need a computer attached? Uh, man, that's hugely annoying, right? And the, co the computer really goes is. to sleep, and you can't print anything even over cloud print. So. To be clear, I don't think that Google is building anything like that. And I love the, um, I think it was Epson just announced that they have like the tanks of ink that will last for yep. you know, four or five years. Thank I think Epson. that's fantastic. Yeah. But like, man, if you think about the peripherals that are attached to a computer, printers and scanners and fax and all that stuff is still pretty that's annoying really at this point. Yeah, so, I, have a, I have a Google print. And, and by the way, mine, when it's, the only problem is the printer, when it goes off, when it goes to sleep, I have to turn the thing off entirely to wake it up to get it to print again. However, printers, uh, print jobs queue up on Google Print. Yeah. For me. Right. On the cloud, uh, not even on your computer. On the cloud. On which the cloud, is awesome. Yeah. Oh, Google yeah. Print's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, the chat room has told me that the uh, uh, router is made by TP-Link, which right. is a Chinese uh, manufacturer. And in fact, if you go to their website, it says meet on hub. Uh, they're not hiding it. And they make a bunch of other stuff, other routers. Here's a, their Archer tri-band router, a wireless dual-band gigabit router, the AC1900. So I'm wondering, this is interesting. I, I feel, And here's a Wi-Fi extender. I'm wondering if this extender would work mm. with the OnHub. You get to buy more. I'm going to buy more and just see. So one thing I saw, did I see, uh, Jason, on one of the stories in the rundown, said something that's some speculation that Google wants to throw some love China's way on one of the new next eyes, the speculation, and this always being also being Chinese. Has, has, have they done stuff with China, Chinese hardware companies before? Am I crazy? They haven't. Are you talking about the the Huawei Nexus potentially? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, well, L, they've used jogging a, my yes, memory. I can't remember. They use how Asus. Much. They've used Asus before. That's well, a yeah, they that's true Taiwan. with the Nexus Seven, right? That's Taiwan. No, that's Taiwan. That's not, that's, uh, no, no, Leo, Leo, you're about to get bombed. That's not China. <laughs> that's not China. No, <laughs> it's not China. They China speak Chinese. Right. It's right. not China. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, the, you know, the, the rumor mill, if the rumor mill can ever be trusted, um, has LG coming out with a Nexus 5-ish phone and the Huawei coming out with a Nexus 6-ish phone. So um, that would definitely be a first as far as I can remember, um, as far as that's concerned, uh, particularly with, with a company like Huawei, which I feel like 
kind of flies under the radar in the U.S. Uh, by a large the two degree. memes I'm waiting for. I've seen the, the first meme I've already seen, of course, is, yeah, just what I want. Google knowing absolutely everything I do. Yeah, it'll And then the second happen. is, oh, good, China will now have direct link to <laughs> all of our communications through the back door. <laughs> those will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, yeah, uh, you're Jeff, right. I'm in sure fact, you saw. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Jeff, did you see where we, uh, you know, we specifically called out that, you know, the, yes. the OnHub is not going to be looking at that sort of stuff. And it's hilarious because you can throw that, you know, FAQ or, or whatever into the middle of an online discussion. People are like, I don't care. Of course, yes. it's going to do whatever, you know. They're going to so. say that. That's exactly what you would say if you were Google. <laughs> yeah. It, they're not one. but you know it'd be very it'll be very easy to see what it's doing i mean uh, all you have to do is run wireshark and well here's the question it, just as you. they have with windows 10 and you can see exactly what's going on in the back here's my real question can google in turn um do i dare use the verb snoop on can it watch what's happening back up my fios or your comcast no, but Comcast can, Verizon well, can. No, but I'm trying. Your the ISP way knows everything. That's what get, gets me about I, I know, the complaint I know about I'm Google. The other way around. I'm asking the other way around. Can Google see whether FiOS and Comcast are blocking certain things or, 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 or governing certain things? Does this give them a, a window on the behavior of ISPs? That's a really good question, Jeff. And I and I hadn't thought about that, and I, I have no idea. Uh, and I assume if 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 that sort of capability were to be offered, it'd probably be the sort of thing you'd either opt into or, yeah, or if they do that, that. They, yeah, they'll have to tell you they're doing that. That'd be pretty but, but damn pretty, nice. Yeah, if you had a router and and it was you know it could check all these connections, it could tell you you're not getting the sort of connectivity that you thought you were paying for, uh, and it could point out where the problems are and maybe help debug you know when people have misconfigured you know their stuff upstream and. You know, why right. aren't you able to stream this YouTube video? Okay, call this number and talk to this guy kind of thing. So. Yeah, and also compare and see, oh, gee, across these, you know, the, uh, these customers of this ISP, they all have slower YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Gardner, that would be a check on net neutrality that would be a wonderful thing. This is uh, Scooter X in our chat room is giving us this uh, section from the Google Agreement. The Google On app and your OnHub do not track the websites you visit or collect the content of any traffic on your network. However, OnHub does collect data such as Wi-Fi channel, signal strength, and device types that are relevant to optimize your Wi-Fi performance. Google policies and terms of services apply as normal to any Google services you use, like Gmail or Google Search, whether you're using them on an OnHub network or not. That makes sense. Um, right. And this goes back to the fundamental principle that anything, any terms of service, when you read them, sounds very scary. Even right. if, you know, it's not, a, you know, oh, now uh, Adobe owns anything I made in Photoshop, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, hopefully Google will act quickly to, you know, debunk any misconceptions. But. I can't, yeah, I mean, it's it's not worth, it's not it's not worth it for Google to, to mess with well, that kind of no. thing. Oh, no. Right. The, the, right. the, the cost uh, in public relations alone, let alone governmental interference would be way too high anyway i don't care because i love google and i'm going to give them all my information anyway so i'm just i'm getting the router and uh that's all i care about and if someday on that three watt speaker google says leo i will listen and obey so there I just I I I think it's great that uh, google just out of nowhere there wasn't a google io or anything just said oh by the way you want a hub and then, literally, <laughs> if you didn't re if you didn't see the story, yeah. which broke what last night? I mean, did you have it on all about Android? You did. Yeah, we talked about it. I mean, but it broke late yesterday. Yeah, it was late. It was after our news. It was out of nowhere. News. It was hey, out of nowhere. Google's getting really good at keeping secrets. It's amazing. Right? Alphabet. Isn't that awesome. <laughs> I know. Right. It's amazing. Better I love than it. Apple. I like the sense of surprise. I don't like what? You know, the, leading up to these Nexus, you know, Nexus phones every year. I feel like we know everything about it before, you know, a week before right. at least. And yeah. I like being surprised. I think it's awesome. I, it's funny because there's a couple people that I really know and trust uh, who have worked on this product and, and who make me think that it will be a really good, uh, oh, good. device. But it, it's also interesting to watch the discussions about I hope this doesn't leak and will it leak and a few right. people checking to see whether it leaks and, and right. we're all like please don't leak please don't and so it's it's nice to get a, a couple clean launches and uh, and hopefully we'll keep doing that I actually let me ask this why don't I mean I can understand why don't you want it to leak so I'll just say from from Google's philosophy at least in the early days 
the idea was don't launch this until everything is perfect, until it's completely ready. Yeah. And of course, you know, as you get to be a bigger company, people are like, oh, we have Google I.O. or we have various partners that we're working with, and so you can't prevent leaks, and so you have certain deadlines. But I, I think that's a really strong philosophy to say, wait until something is completely ready, and then, you know, once you're ready, like Chrome, for example, once you know it's completely ready, then you can launch it. And, uh, and that just gives you the freedom to polish, like, uh, you know, Google Photos, for example, was the sort of thing where it was like, there's always going to be a pressure to launch it early and get it out. And mm -hmm. I think that team probably took a little bit longer and tried to polish it and make it really, really exceptional. And you see that reception. People love it. You know, a yeah. lot of people really enjoy using it. And I think that's a great way to, to do things personally. It, it, you, you get all of the good PR all at once instead of dribbling it out. I like so. There's two really two reasons. One is so that you don't have the pressure of oh we got to live up to this. But two that it all happens. There's something exciting about a reveal that hasn't been telegraphed. It's harder and harder to do. Even Apple is not very good at that, and they were the kings. Well, anyway, I just I I know that's a crazy thing to start with, but uh, to me this was like wow. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a break. Much more to come. We got when you get Mac cuts in here, you got to ask them all the relevant questions. Plus, we'll do a little tour of the new One Plus Two. Both Jason Howell and I have it. I'm frantically setting up my fingerprint. Uh, <laughs> fingerprint reader is good it. and fast, and it allows you to have up to five. Um, but I also have, and I've had it for a few days now, a couple of days, the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note Five. And I have to tell you, I'm loving this. And what a great camera on this thing. I mean, just a great camera. Can you have five fingers from five different hands? Uh, <laughs> yes. Or toes. I've heard well, of people even using their elbow on the uh, Apple phone. I don't know. Anything that has ridges and whorls. I know what Howard Stern's show is going to use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks. FreshBooks.com slash twig. It is, here's a pop quiz. You ready? I know everybody likes quizzes. For freelancers and those of you who make a, a living billing for your time and your expertise, which of the following tasks, we're going to call uh, Matt Cuts back because we're getting a little latency, which of the following tasks represents your favorite part of freelancing? All right, you ready? Formatting and sending invoices. Eh. Collecting your receipts and tracking your expenses. Eh. Following up with clients who don't pay on time. Oh, this is a, just a, this is a list of woe. None of the above at all, any time, ever in a million years will be your favorite part of freelancing. Ding, 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 ding. If you answer D, it, uh, you feel pretty much the same way as everybody who freelances does. It's just not the fun part of freelancing. The fun part is doing the creative, exciting work. The worst part is the 30th of the month. When you have to get the invoices together and get the receipts and the expenses. And oh, FreshBooks really solved this problem for me. I, this was when I was working in Canada. So one of the things FreshBooks did so well, multi-currency. You know, you bill in any the, the local currency. They handle it very well so that you get paid more quickly, which is great. Their FreshBooks app for iOS and Android will automatically uh, keep track of our time and hours and put it in the invoice. You can take pictures of receipts and get it in the expense report. It's just awesome. You don't have to be a numbers person. In fact, it's really designed for people like me who just, even if I you know, can do it, I don't want to do it. Create and send invoices in minutes, watch expenses, just self-organize, track your time almost instantly. Listen, if you've been putting this off, don't. Help is always free from a great team up there in uh, t uh, Toronto where the FreshBooks offices are. They are. There they are. Classic Toronto brick building. You can always count on FreshBooks award-winning support rock stars to go above and beyond whenever you need a hand. I just love working with them. FreshBooks saved my life. Now let them save yours free for 30 days. FreshBooks.com slash twig. And when they uh, ask, how did you hear about us? Don't forget to say, this week in Google. That's where... Start your 30-day free trial today at freshbooks.com slash twig. Matt Cutts is here. Uh, he's a Googler on leave right now. Enjoying. How much longer your leave? Uh, my leave could last through the end of the year still. Nice. Gosh, I wish I were. Do they still pay you? Uh, no, they're not paying me. Oh. So I'm, 
Oh. Like my health insurance, which is nice. So, okay, you're, but that's nice. You're kind of on leave, Leo, in that you could you could do kind of whatever you want, but you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, but so. no one would, yeah, that's true. No one would pay me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm always on leave. <laughs> 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 this is a permanent leave. I, I left 10 years ago. I left mainstream media, and now I'm on permanent leave, and it's a great thing. Living the dream. Yeah. I'm living the dream because I get to talk to you, people like you and Jeff, and I just love it. I just, it's, because uh, I'm obsessed with technology, as you can see by our discussion of that <laughs> round. Yeah. I am obsessed by this stuff. I want to talk, and, but I don't want to, and, and I think probably this is why we have a great audience. We're all obsessed with it, but you don't want to just sit alone and think about it. You want to talk to, what do you think? Is this cool? You see this around the studio all the time. I'll go up to Jason and say, okay, what do you think? You got the one plus two. What do you think? Is it cool? How do you what what do you think about type C? It's it's <laughs> fun to talk about. You know, I tried to talk uh, to my wife about type C and no. she, it's just not the same. No. Leo. I'm uh, lucky this is like therapy for us. I'm lucky because <laughs> my my wife does. You 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 are my geek wives. Yeah. Yeah, we're your geek wives, exactly. Uh, exactly. I miss Gina too. <laughs> ah, Gina. We all do. We all She's due back in a, in a week or two, right? Uh, no yeah. Idea. You know what? I need to check in with her. Yeah. I'll do that right now. You know, we're gonna call her because um, uh, I don't know if she'll do this, but we're gonna ask her to. Uh, we want to cover Maker Fair in New York. Oh, and I thought idea. she could just go over the bridge. Yeah, Maker Base. Yeah. So I, yeah, Maker Base, Maker Fair seems like a logical thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a big fan of Field Trip when it came out, and then Google surprised everybody with Ingress, a game, a wild game, that uh, some of our own staff have become addicted to. Some have lost weight, get in better shape, going around, taking over public buildings <laughs> in, the, in, in a you know, weird way. Uh, this, these were both created by Niantic Labs, which was, a, I think, an acquisition. Uh, and pretty much ran well, itself, right? They were pretty autonomous. I think they were autonomous. I think I think uh, there were there were people within Google, you know, there who was joined a keyhole it. for mapping and all this stuff. Okay, and, and they wanted to do Niantic, and Google said, "Okay, try it within Google first. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah. So, so now they're spun out. They're on their own. Yeah, uh, their own pretty company. Neat. Hey, by the way. Drew all enough byline on uh, TechCrunch. That's Drew's new job. So proud of you, Drew. Good friend. Oh, yay. Yay. It's nice to see him doing great. It's so great, yeah. Um, important account information. Niantic Labs is becoming an independent company. We'll be taking our unique blend of exploration and fun to even bigger audiences with some amazing new partners joining Google as collaborators and backers. Niantic will be building on the success of Ingress, which has been downloaded more than 12 million times. This was not the first first spinoff I thought we'd see from Alphabet. <laughs> now, that's that's a, the question that I have. When you say spun off from Alphabet, does that mean that Niantic is a component of Alphabet now? Or I interpreted this as spun off as in, see you guys later, you're an independent company, but we'll still kind of work with you a little bit in, in a collaboration with Google. Is, and we invested in yeah, it. I, yeah, I think they are completely independent now. So they're but, so but outside Google, of Alphabet. Google funded the spinoff. Yeah. Okay. Or what? Right. I, I guess it's kind of a yeah. It's a it's a murky situation considering what we know about Alphabet. They didn't sell it. No, but uh, but they're they're independent now. I believe independent outside of Alphabet. But the nice thing is that you know this kind of a structure lets you say okay, you can work within Google. Uh, in theory, you could acquire companies and you can have the CEO stay the CEO, or you could you know have CEOs within the uh, Alphabet sort of uh, you know umbrella. Or, you know, if, if you try that and for whatever reason uh, it'll work better to, to um, be completely independent, then people can always spin out that way as well. And, you know, I love Ingress. I, I, even my wife plays, so uh, I wish them wish them well. But it, it's kind of nice that they, people have a lot of different options and they can try all of those and see what works best for them. So these were Googlers originally or some Googlers? Uh, I believe they came in... I, 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 I John Hinkey and and these these folks, yes, who I believe came in via the Keyhole. They were Keyhole. Uh, so Keyhole was the mapping became... satellite uh, imagery company that was bought for maps. So they were Keyhole Google people Earth. and became Google Earth. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think you know John is one of the the main people, and and I think there's other people as well. But I you know I know that all the Geo folks, you know Brian McClendon, all these folks wish them well. Neat. Um, so yeah, makes it, sense you know, that they were Keyhole because. Ingress is all about maps. 
Right. Exactly. Yes. Interesting. This also allows them to have their own equity. It's in essence what Advance did with Reddit. They they had bought Reddit whole, and then said, "We want to motivate the right. staff and the executives right. with with equity, so we we'll spin it back out again, but still right. own." I don't know what Google owns of Niantic. I would guess it's a considerable chunk. Well, I don't know exactly either, but you yeah. know, if you can have folks like John Hankey, Brian McClendon, Michael Jones come in. Uh, do great work at Google, and then as it makes sense, have them spin off or do other things, and then maybe come back again. It, it's all to the good, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad that they're going to try this approach now and see. see hopefully, this will have even more fun things. In, in, Wait, now, uh, but now you've read, raised a lot of issues because of this Alphabet thing. Because a spinoff would be a separate. Is it a separate stock issue? Is it what happens to people who are Google or now Alphabet stock shareholders? And this is part of it. What what it, I. What goes? Uh, usually, there's some sort of compensation. I don't understand how it works. Well, and sometimes if if a company is going to do their, you know, if somebody's going to do their own thing, it it might be the case that uh, you know the the parent company can fund them and some, right. you know, become a little bit of a stakeholder. So that might be what's going on. And yeah, maybe they're getting a little money uh, for that. Huh. I'm sure well, it'll they be get, disclosed. They get, they get equity. I mean, this also allows you to give equity to founders. If it's a wholly owned subsidiary, right. you've got no equity. You got your stock. Your stock options are in are in parent company. Well, yeah, but it depends what the structure is. Yeah, of this new company too. Right. It it's does. all very confusing. Did you see the interesting thing that uh, Nikesh Aurora did for equity in his company? What did he do? <laughs> Apparently, he. So he, you know. Uh, Nikesh was at Google for a long time and uh, sort of in charge of uh, revenue and the business side of things. And he went over to SoftBank. Apparently, he just bought four hundred and eighty-three million dollars worth of shares in SoftBank. Uh, isn't that impressive? Almost that's, half that's a billion a dollars. Uh, <laughs> every investment advisor in the world would say, "Do not concentrate your treasure in one stock." But he believes in that SoftBank. Shows confidence. It shows confidence. It shows confidence. Wow. SoftBank uh, also upped its stake in Sprint. I think it's now 80%, mm -hmm. um, which is good because Sprint needs that money to uh, build up their LTE infrastructure. And, and boy, are we seeing the benefits, we talked about this a little yesterday, of competition in the mobile space. It's great, oh. right? So now yeah. Sprint joins T-Mobile and Verizon in eliminating early termination fees and contracts. You buy the phone outright or you amortize it, but you know what you paid exactly for the phone. Um, the competition has been, the prices have gone down. It's just been great in the mobile yeah. space. This is one you can't say Google Fi did it. But uh, <laughs> are you using Fi, Matt? By the way, Jeff and I owe you a debt of gratitude. Oh, yeah, big, big, big gratitude. You got us uh, invites to Fi. Well, I, I, I'm just happy to try to help. But yeah, I am using Fi and I really like it. Uh, you know, the Wi-Fi calling is, is the audio is really good. So it is I'm excellent. to use it over, yeah, cell phones and landlines. And yeah. so that's kind of nice. Uh, and that's, again, Sprint is one of the carriers on Fi along with T-Mobile and Wi-Fi. So a stronger Sprint is good for, uh, so it all comes around, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have to give T-Mobile a lot of credit for oh, sort yeah. of taking that uncaring oh, yeah. approach and, and getting oh. you know rid of the contracts and stuff because I never thought I'd see Verizon say, Can okay, we're getting that? rid of those two-year yeah. subsidy kind of things. Yeah, just stunning. Jeff, did it you ever think you'd see that? <laughs> no, no, and I'm still waiting to connect my Nexus 7. Did you ever go? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I, it's on T-Mobile. Did you ever go uh, FI? No, because I I told you my saga. I'm still trying because that's where I want to buy the next phone so that the the Nexus Six becomes the five phone uh, and the other phone becomes the AT and T phone because I still have the AT and T unlimited. Because did, are, you, are you sorry you asked now? No, I think you're smart. And if the Nexus because you want a five, right? You don't want to. That six is huge. Oh no, I like the I like the big. You do. I okay. got old eyes. No, that's that's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, but um, the the five case makes it just. A silly millimeter too big for my um, switchy thing in the car. Ah, why so, use the case? Is the case you don't, don't intrinsically like tied to the, the, the case? Is ugly. Oh, okay. You right. don't know. I have no idea why. <laughs> well, I didn't know maybe there was like an extra antenna in the case no, because, or something. Because here's why. Here's why. <laughs> my my Nexus six case. Yes. It's just 
uh, an indent for these buttons. It doesn't work very well. This ah. added new buttons on I top of the I agree 100%. As well. It's why I kept it on, too. As ugly as it is. I like it, yes. It has buttons on the buttons <laughs> instead of just having a cutout where you have to reach in and, and do the volume. Yeah. No, I. it's so funny because that's exactly why I kept it, even though it's kind of ugly. Now I have really, uh, uh, I have phones in every size. I have a five yeah. inch. Yeah, you sure do. <laughs> I have a five and a half inch. I have a well, five point seven inch. I have a six inch. I, I've been trying to. I, I, I got. I, I, I'm supposed to be able to, to get into some new stuff at Facebook with the video, which we talked about last week. So no big deal. Mentions. It's, are you getting? Are you going to get into I mentions? Hope so. I hope so. But the problem is, it's only iOS. So I got to. I got to oh, no. get that ready. So I'm, I, I pulled out my old iPhone 4, which just feels like a just a, the oh. dinkiest. It feels obscenely small. That's three and a half inches. <laughs> Ridiculous. Talk about shrinkage. Yeah. The phone for him? Yeah. George Costanza time. Yeah. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just, Leo, did just they, ridiculous. Did they ever get you in mentions? Uh, no. So here's the deal. Oh, no. So here's the deal on mentions. Um, you, I'm verified profile. You have to have a verified page. None of my pages uh. are verified. Only my profile is verified. So Ricky Gervais, Trey Ratcliffe is on mentions. Oh. Um, those are the two I've seen. There's others. I, I'm I, telling you, I would I would introduce you to the person who could probably help. No, I don't want to. You say that. No. I always feel no. guilty. I feel guilty that I, I got a uh, a one plus because of you, Jeff. I feel guilty that I got Google that didn't Fi because of you, cloud, Matt. That came from See, now I owe you. Chris <laughs> Matthews gonna, said, Chris I'm Matthews in his book back. Hardball said, the secret to politics is to get people to do you favors because, weirdly enough, I owe you, I feel like I owe you because you did me a favor, but truthfully, you owe me, me more because you did me a favor. You do me favors every week. <laughs> this is a favor. So though. now I've co-opted you both. No, you you guys do me a huge favor showing up on this show. It would not be as interesting if it were just me. Uh, so I'm very grateful. In fact, it's just this mutual favor society. But I just I don't want to. I I feel funny doing that. I just want them to give it to me for my own merit. <laughs> should. So what would you do with it, Jeff, uh, if you got mentions, Facebook mentions? What I would wanna, you I just want to play with the video and play with the, 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 the news, and I want to take it to my students. The issue is, of course, it's issued to an individual. So to try, uh, my, my school is an institution. We can't give on the love to, you know, 110 students. Well, I wish but, somebody would, because Ricky Gervais just basically keeps posting pictures of his cat. I know, but I find it amusing as hell. I am not a Ricky Gervais. I was a Ricky Gervais fan with The Office, but this you went wacko last week on this. This is not a you. This is <laughs> uh, not, and that's the thing. I would, I wouldn't do it if I didn't feel like I could bring more to the table than a picture of my cat. <laughs> I guess he's saying something. Is he saying something? Oh yeah, he does. And the other thing is, it feels like it's kind of wonky because doesn't it continue what to crash? What's he saying? Yeah. I've been uh I've been editing. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, I say hello to some people. Aaron Walton, hi. I get depressed Jeremy just hi. just listening see, to his you know, see Leo. Hey. NBC <laughs> is to you as you are to Ricky Gervais. NBC is to me as I am to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> uh, NBC I think would you just at, insulted me. Wait, right. NBC would look at Twit and say, well, that's not television. That's not. And you're looking at Ricky, Ricky Gervais and saying, well, that's not, not vi live video. That's, that's, that's crap. <laughs> so who does he look down on? Yeah, right. Who's at the bottom of that pit? Uh, or would you say top of that pyramid? All right, let's see who else is, uh, is streaming a live video. I, I don't, I think it's, well, on my feed anyway. I guess others are probably doing it. Oprah's probably got a live stream. You know they should give it to the to the Donald Trump. Oh, <laughs> oh man, talk Sabrina, about ratings. Sabrina's used it. Who? <laughs> Sabrina Williams. Okay. I mean, um, um, Serena. Serena. Sabrina. Serena. Oh, Felicia Day has it. Oh, she's, she's got a good, book. Good timing because she's got a new book. Started pre-production. 
Was she? Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I have to turn off. <laughs> Hurry up, she go, sounds go. so much like uh, Ricky Gervais. Isn't that odd? Good. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's now that is funny. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. I've just learned I'm number four on the Times list this Sunday in the UK. Thank you ever so much for making me a best-selling author. Cheerio, mate. I see a few faces you haven't seen before. Oh, man. Well, now at least we know who Ricky Gervais looks down on. Um, what else? What else? I, don't, I think, uh, huh. Wait, what else? We just did one story. That's all we've done so far. Ashley Madison. That I only have two words for you. Oh. Ooh, fuck. The, the data is uh, the data is coming out. I notice you're both here. Good. Uh, <laughs> you haven't left the country. That's a good sign. I also, let me clear. I do not eat at Subway. Yeah. Poor, <laughs> oh, I don't man. know what. I shouldn't say poor Jared, but uh, that oh, that did Jesus. not that did not go as expected. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. That's a sick name. <sighs> Uh, Google is testing drones. Got off that topic quickly, didn't we? Yeah, well, what is there to say? <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> to say. Nothing to say. Lots of people cheating. Hmm. Yeah, cheaters. 30 million Bunch of, of cheaters. Them. A lot of them. Can you just imagine the poor interns at Gawker? Oh, they're having fun. Oh, well, they're working their oh, yeah. butts off. You know who's working their butts off is 4chan as they dig through the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a huge amount of data. Many, many gigabytes. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. They probably have interns chained yeah. to a desk at Gawker yeah. doing it. Uh, well, you know somebody as quickly as quickly as he can writing a uh, a database search so that you can look your name up. Mm -hmm. Wikipedia entities against. Um, yeah. Is it real name in there? I guess it's oh, because for credit card. I think there's email addresses. There's real names, email addresses, and a record of every transaction. Now, I don't understand how Ashley Madison works. Do you pay for each hookup? Leo, I'm going to be very clear about this. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one would admit Me this. Too. No idea. No idea. Apparently, you know, though, would you ask Howard Stern? 19... <laughs> Howard would know. They, 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 apparently, they charge $19 to delete you from their database. Right. Which was like... Right. Yeah, so they'd earned like $1.7 for just the removals from their database, which is also pretty funny slash scary. Now, yeah. do, now have those removed No, they were still in there. ended up on... I think what they said the is they... Uh, I think the oh, hackers yeah. said... Now, we haven't seen it yet in the dump to verify it, but I believe that the ha one of the things that incensed the hackers about Ashley Madison is this $19 fee to remove your name, and they didn't even remove your name because it's still in the data dump. But we don't. We'll find out, <laughs> won't we? I can imagine a class action lawsuit ruining Ashley Madison sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> is there an Ashley Madison? I have no is idea. Is it like a person, or is it like Betty Crocker? I think Stern has interviewed because because he they advertise on Stern, of course. Right. Yeah. I think Stern interviewed the guy. I thought. What did I see? Something was it? Oh, only it's a guy. It's not a girl. percent. No, of course it's a guy. Of course it is. Of course it's a guy. What am I thinking? It's a made up name. Jesus, Leo. <laughs> what um, am I thinking? Uh, what is it, ninety percent of the clients are men, of course, but that means there aren't a lot of matches to be had. Oh, oh, because you have to be a uh, there has to be a female member to match you up. Well, that's the whole idea. Oh, I don't understand it. I thought that maybe they would go out and look for people for you. Have you heard the the, the, the serious commercial? The serious commercial is just hilarious because the man's voice says. Well, I saw your e I saw your you left your browser open and I saw something. What is this you were in on Ashley Madison? And she says, "Well, actually I'm glad you said that because uh, I just am not satisfied and I love you and we have the kids and the house and the mortgages and all that, but I I just need more." And and he says, "Well, I guess I understand that." And then she says, you know, basically, "You want to do that too." And he says, "What a good idea." Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> my god. Never There's happened. a marriage doomed to fail. Uh, or maybe not. Oh, I don't know. I shouldn't judge. Yeah, I'm not judging. No judgment. No judgment. Google won the internet, says Wired. Now it wants to cure disease. I'm happy about this. The ambitions of Google will never end. So uh, this is one of the uh, <laughs> alphabet uh, companies, uh, Google Life Sciences. That's the glucose sensing contact lens we've heard about. And Calico. And they they're just a story out also on the run out that they're working on a bandage sized, a cloud connected, blood blood glucose monitor, which is just a huge for diabetics. Absolutely I huge. I love this. Yeah, this is awesome. 
You know where I'm going with this? I've uh, been reading lately about new hearing aid devices that will do many of these things. The newest wearables, as 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 we age out of the uh, mm -hmm. mainstream, Jeff, <laughs> uh, the newest wearables are uh, earpieces. So Broggy has this Dash, which are Bluetooth headsets, but they that they hope to do more. You can do, uh, obviously, heart rate's easy, but... Uh, they can see thoughts coming in and out of your ears. I don't know. They can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When steam comes out of your ears, they'll know. Uh, anyway, I'm. I'm actually, believe it or not, I, I. As soon as I heard about this, made an appointment with the audiologist down the street for a hearing test because I'm hoping I can get some of these newfangled hearing aids. Are they on the market? <sighs> you know, Starkey's doing some stuff. I don't know. I'll find out. Uh, but that's but that that to me is a sensible wearable. Of course, maybe that's because I go through mm -hmm. life wearing headphones. <laughs> yeah, you do. Right. So you feel naked without. Them. I do. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> but imagine uh, instead of being wired headphones, these are Bluetooth headphones that have Bluetooth amplifier. But then they're also doing metrics and you know measuring my glucose and my heart rate and giving you instructions. Giving me instructions. In life. They have they have microphones. I can talk to them. They can talk to me. I just feel like there's stuff going on here. Eat some broccoli. Eat more broccoli. You should eat that broccoli. <laughs> we were talking about humans. Um, we which, always talk about humans. But. Which No, yes, I know. But this sure. is a TV yeah. show called Humans. Uh, and I, I just started watching it. And um, it's on AMC. And uh, William Hurt's in it. And he's an older fellow who kept his robot six years and it's starting to wear out. It's got little blue gel coming out of its nose. And uh, starting to wear out, so he's so he's getting he gets a new one, and uh, he's this is a robot nurse, and he says, "What is this? I ordered a uh, grilled cheese sandwich." She said, "Your dietary profile calls for broccoli soup." <laughs> 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 so he calls the company. Broccoli is good for you. <laughs> this it's is what Google will do. Just a matter of time. Broccoli soup. Last Showtime. September, Google bought Lyft of Labs, makers of Liftware, a high-tech spoon. It's designed to help people with tremors, neurodegenerative tremors, eat. So it's a, it's a, actually, it's a uh, image stabilized uh, stabilization spoon. I guess. Life stabilization. Life stabilization. Um, really interesting stuff. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, uh, and you probably were going to say something much more interesting, Matt. Oh, I was just going to say, speaking of good for you, you know, solar energy is awfully good oh, for you. Oh, let's talk about that. And Project Sunroof. This is, Project I wish Sunroof. I was so unhappy it wasn't for my address. Not in my address either. And we're just, but if you're in the Bay Area, it is. So t tell us about this, Matt. Have you done, it's, you're, it's, you can do it where you are, right? Uh, yeah, they're, they've got it in the Bay Area of California. They've got it in the Boston area and they've got it in Fresno. And they're going to expand to the rest of the country, you know, in the coming months. I need an address, uh, a San Francisco address, pretty... so I can enter it in here. Ah, 235 okay. Second Street. What I love about it. Okay. That's the CNET building, probably. That's, that's the CNET building. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. That roof has 1,689 hours of usable sunlight a year. And 24,000 square feet, you would save $13,000 if they put sunroof, uh, uh, solar the on the roof thing? on there. So, but I can drag mm -hmm. the marker. Let's go to a, that's, let's go residential somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So what I love about this is somebody for their 20% project decided to process all oh, of the Google Earth data cool. and not just, uh, you know, do a roof detector, but they can actually try to do 3D modeling of a bunch of different roofs at scale, try to figure out trees that are nearby, so how much shadow you're going to have, and then they oh, say, geez. okay, where's the sun going to be all year, where's the clouds historically, the temperature patterns, and so massive level of processing, and it turns out the vast majority of people, uh, you know, in the next few years will benefit from switching to solar, and the, the main limiter in switching to solar these days is less and less about the cost of the modules because they're getting cheaper and more about the cost of the solar providers finding the customers. And so if you can push that oh. down a little bit, you get more solar, solar gets cheaper, you know, and, and people just get, you know, better renewable energy. And so 
it's it's one of my favorite twenty percent projects that I've ever seen. I don't know where I am. I'm trying to get uh, something more res. Here's a house, something more residential. Um, so this house uh, has one thousand eight hundred thirty three hours of usable sunlight, one thousand seven hundred thirty nine square feet available, and would say fourteen thousand. I mean, this is real money. And then it gives you oh, yeah. more information the, the about. Solar can, you could say what your yeah. monthly electric my, you, monthly electric bill is two hundred fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, record recommended installation size, average annual savings. I mean, no, this if you is go to San Francisco, go 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 to the Richmond district in San Francisco. Well, I think that's where I am. I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere really? out. There's no sun there. Uh, yeah, it's, of course the picture shows a sunny day and beautiful. I don't know where this is. It's a lot of houses. Oh, you know what I could do? Let's go small. Wow, this is cool. That's as small as I can go. I think... Is that SF or is that the... Yeah, this is still San Francisco. I just scrolled away from... Uh, just go to the upper left. That's San Francisco. the, that's the, the piers. And here's... Don't go all the way to the left. Yeah, we're going to go to the Richmond District, the fog belt. Is that, that's Twin to those Peaks. There. It's, it's always fog. It's yeah. always, always... Here's always the fog. ocean. All right, so there we go. Let's go down here. Let's pick somewhere right on the ocean where it's foggy. Yeah, Right, there you go. Yeah. All right. Oh, crap. <laughs> $38,000 in no, savings. No, that's not it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well. I, anybody want to give me a uh, an address? Uh, oh, I know. Wait a minute. I, I know. I used to live in uh, San Francisco. Hey, let's do this again. I just thought of this. I could give my old address. I used to live on Moraga Street. What was that? Let's say 2400 Moraga. This was out in the... Uh, out in the avenues, sunset. yeah, yeah the sunset. Oh, that's that's not one of the buildings. Here's a here's a home. Drag this over here. All right. Well, wow, see, it's thirteen thousand dollars still. Um, that's uh, that's pretty good, and that's based on one hundred twenty-five bucks electricity if you uh, use more. And then they show you lease, loan, and in both cases, zero upfront cost after incentives, or buy, which costs you twelve thousand. But you'd you'd save thirty six thousand, so it'd pay you back in eight years. So, do either of you have solar in your houses? Not yet. Matt, How about you, been Matt? Thinking about pulling the trigger. I am too. And uh, there's this great uh, author, uh, Ramez Nam. He actually used to work in the search division of Bing, but thank goodness now he he's like a <laughs> futurist and he writes sci fi thrillers and all these things. So I'm like, yeah, don't work at Bing anymore. Uh, but he has this great stuff where he talks about solar and. You know, in the next decade or so, it's going to be half the price or, or it's trending toward half the price of fossil fuel. And in California, it's already basically economically viable to switch over to solar and you'll save yeah. money pretty quickly. Because we get a and lot it's of going to be, in, Yeah, in a lot of states, though, faster than people expect. Uh, and, and so what, what I really like is if you scroll all the way down on a given address, it will it will even show five or six different solar providers. Oh, this is great. Oh, wow. So it's. I mean, the main reason why I haven't pulled the trigger is it's like you got to do the research and find out yes. what you like, and this way you can just instantly kind of take you to the people who can help you. This is, I think, Sun Power is the one you want. Well, you know what I want? I want somebody that can give me Elon Musk's battery. Solar City. Yeah. Solar City's not on yeah. this list, oddly. No, that's weird. Well, this is just well, weird. Oh, these yeah. are sponsored. <laughs> Our service is free to you, but we may be compensated by some of these solar companies. <laughs> oh, so Jeff, I suspect it's a profit thing. Think, well, even if you make money at it, you can still get people on solar a I lot agree. more. That's fine. And uh, and I suspect that's why they haven't rolled it out to the country is they have to find people who can be solar providers right. in each of these regions, which takes a lot of elbow grease. This is exciting. This is really cool. Yeah, we've been wanting to do this. We have absolutely a perfect property for this. And I w we're, we're already on a well. I would love to get off the grid and have batteries, see, so I could just really, when the zombie apocalypse hits, <laughs> I don't care. Of course, that means we I have to build a 30-foot wall around the building and arm myself. But, hey, what the hell? <laughs> well, Ozzy will protect me. Ozzy will do it. Uh, we, we had to spend, we spent 15 grand on a whole house generator. Oh, wow. Because you were worried after, about storms? Well, after Sandy, we were yeah. out of the house for two weeks. 
Uh, really? Was getting, yeah, it was, it was, and so, uh, there were, and I was very lucky, very, very lucky to have gotten rooms at Marriott. Um, were you out of the house because there was no power? There's no power, and wow. it was cold, and plus we're on, we're also on well, which means there's no toilet. Right. When the power is out, there's right. no water. Right. And uh, so the cat was here. It was getting to the point where it was cold enough that the, it was going to be unsafe for the cat, and the cat doesn't want to move, and then, oh, hey, wow. hey. Um, yeah. So, of course... All of all of the East Coast can thank us dearly for having put the generator in because now, since then, of course, there's no storms. <laughs> and there never will months. be because you bought a generator. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to come out to California and wash my car so it'll start raining for you. Right. So <laughs> I'm very intrigued. I think this is, again, this is, this is, this is an this example is of a of virtuous course. circle because, yeah, there's advertising on this page for these solar companies. But... Because of that, this is probably makes money for Google. Bravo, because this is a great resource. This is, uh, I, I'm thrilled. This is fabulous. So this is a 20%, eh, Matt? <laughs> yeah, it was a 20% project. I, I, it's more than one person. I think the mm -hmm. team is based, or it started the project in Boston, which is why they also show solar in the Boston area. But what really just hugely surprises me is, you know, within five years, this will make sense in a ton of different states right. in the United States. Right. Yes. Wow, it's just really cool. So we're getting there. Do you want to answer that while I do an ad? Sorry. No problem. Get the phone. Because our show today brought to you by LegalZoom. <laughs> There's always, I've always got something to do. LegalZoom, I love them. You don't want the govern, government, government to decide what happens to your property. Or your minor children if something should happen to you. That's why we encourage you to celebrate National Make-A-Will Month at LegalZoom.com. Doing the right thing's never been easier. Make that last will or that living trust. Or both today. LegalZoom makes it easy and affordable. In fact, they have LegalZoom has a new last will and living trust bundles that include powers of attorney as well. So you really can get it all done and much easier than you think and certainly for less than a, a white shoe law firm would charge you. LegalZoom's online resources and estate planning tools help you figure out what you need so you won't be confused by the many options. Uh, and by the way, uh, yes, I know LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they can even, they've, they've, they've worked out a network of independent attorneys in most states and pre-negotiated low flat rates. So if you need to ask a question, you can do that at a very affordable price as well. We didn't need to, we just filled out the forms and made it very easy. You get a nice kit in the mail. Don't procrastinate. When it comes to protecting your family, this is job one. And get the legal help you can count on at LegalZoom.com today. Don't forget to enter Twig in the referral box at checkout, and we'll get you 10 bucks off. LegalZoom.com. The offer code is TWIG, and we are so glad. I used LegalZoom years ago. They've been around for about 10 years. They must have just started when they uh, incorporated Twit. LegalZoom.com. And then, of course, for the will, we just did the wills. Lisa did the wills. <sighs> We're talking uh, Google, the Google. What are, you, what are you leaving me, Leo? What would you like? Would you like a phone? Because I've got a few. I think, I, I think, I think a phone would be nice, yeah. <laughs> I gave Dvorak, on Sunday, I gave Dvorak the Moto G. Because I knew I was going to get two phones this week. And we're not even done. The new iPhones come out in three weeks. I don't. It's gotten to the point where I don't. I don't even want to do, buy them. And Lisa says, "No, you have to. This is your job." <laughs> oh. That's uh. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, oh, yeah. I have to buy a phone. Twist my arm. Oh no. Do you know how many numbers I have? <laughs> you could give one to, to you don't Donald get a Trump. Call anyway. I. You know what? I don't answer the. Phone. <laughs> this is the irony of it. <laughs> I don't even answer the phone anymore. I really don't. Unless unless it's like my daughter, my son. Lisa, I don't answer the phone because uh, it's it, too much. It's for half the time. It's the Democratic National Committee trying to get money out of me. Uh. Don't ever, if you <laughs> ever, ever give money to a political campaign, you will never hear the end of it. So, but I see. I I still will give, but I just don't want to do it over the phone. That's too much pressure. Uh, drones in space. They're using the NASA exception. Uh, U.S. Uh, airspace 
Of course, there are cons limits on what you can do with drones. Uh, but and in fact, I think if you're a commercial enterprise, it's a uh, it's even more limited. But what uh, they're doing is they have, uh, as you know, a deal, a land deal or something with NASA. Let me see. Let me read this out loud because I, I th they struck a deal with NASA. They're testing drones capable of speeds up to 100 miles an hour. They weigh less than 55 pounds. Uh, there is a blanket on the commercial operation of unmanned aircraft in the U.S., thanks to the FAA. But Google... Uh, Project Wing uh, take, is taken to the air because they have, uh, they're over private lands, by the way, they're not over you, because they have a certificate of waiver or authorization from NASA. The certificate lets public, normally lets public organizations like the military, state universities, police, or fire departments exp experiment with unmanned aerial systems. Uh, but I guess... Uh, Google has made a deal of some kind. It's over private land for crying out loud. They're trying to see whether cell phone signals can be used by low-flying drones for automatic air traffic control. I, you know, what? I love the R&D stuff at Google. This is mind-boggling. Yeah. <laughs> well, when Matt You're was talking earlier, I just had this vision of, of, of Larry sitting... In a room, probably no desk, because he wouldn't have something standard like that. Just thinking, <laughs> what do I tackle next? Where is there? How problem? does that work, Matt? Dude, does I? Okay, that's not how I imagine it, Jeff. I imagine Larry sitting in a Somebody chair, something like this chair, with his fingers <laughs> steepled. I imagine and, it's all white, and he's and, wearing entirely and there, white. And there is one door in the room through which comes an infinite procession of engineers saying. You have, and Larry says, thrill me. And the engineer has five minutes. Does he have, does he have a cat in his, in his arms? Yeah, he could have Mr. Bigglesworth in his <laughs> Yeah. Tell me what your plan is. And the engineer says, okay, uh, Mr. Page, I've got this idea. We're going to put some drones up in the air with cell phone technology. They'll fly all flight plans, receive directions from computerized air traffic control systems, and... It'll make money for everybody. And Larry and says... And then Larry says, ah, but you forgot about this and this and this and this. Yes, sir, Mr. Page, sir. I, I'm i right. I'm on it. <laughs> Isn't that how it works, Matt? You nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> how it works. <laughs> no, but I, do, uh, I don't think Larry has to uh, generate all this himself. He probably does. No, but I imagine but there are people constantly... Well, absolutely. Coming to him with great ideas. But he's also looking at, at big problems, right? That's what it jazzes right. everybody. That's what that was one of, that's what the whole Amazon story fascinated about is that you know the New York Times can't understand that somebody cares deeply about big problems and that big problems are hard work. Um and and so yeah, certainly people come to, to Larry Page and say, I've got a great idea, I've got a great problem. But I also, but he has that's the point. He has the freedom now to say, hmm, what if I tackle diabetes? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Larry is a um, he's a scientist and he gets excited about reasoning from first principles. Ah. So, you know, if you say this is how much the phone costs, you know, he might look at it he and say, care. well, yeah. how about the raw materials? Right. You know, right. why does it cost more than the raw right. materials? You right. know, and and so he does get excited about those kinds of things like, uh, you know, Makani is this uh, wind energy company that's sort of in Google X and, and the idea of like, oh, what can you do with you know, with wind energy and kites and, and so anything that's got an, or when he gets really interested, you know, meetings tend to just like spill over long because, you know, like street view, what sensors can you put on a car and what kind of data can right. you get? And, and all those sorts of things, reasoning from first principles, like how long does it take and how man, much money would it take to scan all the world's books? You know, those are the sorts of things that are like catnip for his oh, Mr. Biggles. Man, friend. I'm so jealous. And, and Matt, is you know, that not the? I mean, that's the dream. That is the dream. It really is. <laughs> well, this is why you know I, I wrote a post a long time ago about what, what I wish Google would do for news, and I wish you were excited about this idea. But if you get to the first principles, you 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 absolutely ignore everything that we know today about how it's done. It's it's it's, it's a hundred years old, one hundred fifty years old. Instead, if you get to the first principle of saying what does society need to know, and how do we help them know it? How do we gather information? I mean, that's the kind of thing that, that Google attacks. That's the way to look at, re-look at big problems.
Is that a first principle? Well, and you'll see um, – it's interesting because like how how do you support you know good media – you know, and and so uh, Udi Manber had done some really interesting analysis about like how much money do you need to pay someone's salary? Okay, how many page views do you need? At what ad rate? And it's that sort of stuff that leads you to things like Google Contributor, which, by the way, is open without any right. uh, invites now, and now anybody can subscribe to it. And that's the sort of thing where it's like, okay, where what are the different business models? How do you play with that? And, and that's very fun to think about. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think – see, I would – all right. So if I made an infinite amount of money and 20, 30 billion, that's as good as infinite. Yeah. I would feel responsible. Do, do you, like mm -hmm. I now have a – I have a duty not to just get in the boat and go and say, <laughs> screw you guys – I would feel I have now a duty because I have these in, immense, unimaginable resources to use them wisely. Is that kind of, I mean, I don't know if it's a, I don't, I doubt he thinks it's a burden. It's probably a joy, but I think that there is a sense of responsibility he must have. You know, I'm not sure he thinks about it as a sense of responsibility so much as it's really fun yeah, neat. to do. And, and wouldn't it be great to do this? And, you know, like Sergey, you know, he, a lot, we often joke that he's, you know, well, between Larry and Sergey, it's kind of like Batman and Iron Man a little bit, you know, because <laughs> they, they do enjoy the gadgets as well. You got to right. enjoy doing all that stuff. But the, the chance to do something that nobody's ever done before, I think that is so appealing. What, so it, what I think drives it's them, though? What drives them? About. What drives Larry? Uh, I mean, he is fundamentally interested in how the world works and why it doesn't work better. And, and you know, he's got some large interests like energy and transportation yeah. and and those sorts of things but you know he he's very well read on a lot of different topics and so the science of it and why things work certain ways uh, and why can't we experiment more and I, I think he's also fascinated I'm guessing right I, this is all my personal opinion mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah and by the way we should I'm putting you in a terrible position because yeah. I mean <laughs> uh, 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 Larry's gonna be like what are you talking what are you about telling that? people you know? my motivation you don't know a thing about me yeah. Uh, <laughs> you haven't seen me for this long. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, but, but you you're the closest think, thing to somebody on the inside that we got. So, and I'm just and I don't mean and I don't mean in any way a challenging thing either. I'm just really interested. You know, you feel like I think Steve Jobs said, and I thought this was really uh, interesting and telling that there was a point where he realized that everything around him was made up by somebody, probably somebody not as bright as him. And so when he realized that, he said, I realize I could, this is not a, this is written in stone. It's all made up by humans and I can do whatever I, I can change it in any way I want. It's all clay. Uh, and so that was what motivated him was this thought that I can, you know what, maybe there's a better way to do yeah. something. And I you can know, do Leo, that. Leo, your, your, your point about the kind of responsibility, I've had jobs where I end up unhappy and I can't get anything done. And I go home at the end of the day and I think, and it's not my current job, just to be clear. And I think... You know, I, I cost them N dollars today, and I didn't actually get anything done. I went to stupid meetings. I, I got nothing accomplished of value. I didn't increase the value for the day. It's the worst, the worst feeling there is for work, I think, is to do that. When you're Larry Page, you know, you, you sit there and say, I just thought about, you know, marshmallows for an hour. <gasps> I could have, I could have, had a, I could have solved a V8. You know, I, I could have done something. I, uh, I There's got to be a yeah. little of that, right? I think I think because that's that's the way because that's the ethos of Google. The people don't understand. I think about Google. That's because because you know I when when people were starting to get the second day angle on Alphabet was well let's be let's not trust Larry Page. It's a cynical act by here. I said, what have you seen the man act cynically? Right. He doesn't act cynically. Mm -hmm. The company doesn't act cynically. It really doesn't. All in all, yeah yeah yeah. It'll do some crappy stuff and put up some bad ads. Or like, oh, fine 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 fine. It's a company, but but all in all. It acts trying to solve problems, and that's what has to be done. I look, and, and then that, there's there's people like uh, Larry Ellison, as an example. Yeah, <laughs> for him, billions of dollars means I'm going to build a bigger yacht. Yes, and I'm and I'm a higher up on the rich list than either. I'm a three comma guy. I'm in the yeah. three comma club. Uh, I shouldn't. I don't know Larry. I maybe it, that probably is not the case either. I know he actually has done some amazing things. But uh, I feel like Larry and Sergey, and people like Elon Musk, because I put them in the same category, which is, mm -hmm. and we think of them as Superman. We think of them as Starks because 
their areas of concern are so different, so much more lofty than I'm just worried about the groceries and what I'm going to make for dinner. <laughs> and uh, and Larry's starting to think about well, if could could you know how could we how could we end death? <laughs> then you can have plenty of time to decide what to make for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure Larry still has to think about dinner. I don't know. Everybody does, but it it I just it's we we live in remarkable times, and it's wonderful that we can celebrate people uh, like Larry Page and and Sergey Brin um, uh, and what they're doing. And so I just wanted to get well, some insight. I, I wasn't trying to pry or be nosy or gossip, but yeah. I just no, no. It, it. I think it's good because Google also provides a good structure where people can keep Larry and Sergey honest. If if they're you know if they get too far off kilter, you know you've got a lot of people who can push the big red button and say, oh, I I, I think Google is doing something wrong here. And, and Larry and Sergey also rely very much on people who are. You get some really, really, really smart people who are do, doing deep thinking in areas you know nothing about, and then they can bring you proposals yeah. like, "What would you do with a depth sensing camera?" And, and you know, neat things you could do. But one of the more inspiring things I've heard Larry say is, is essentially, you know, the worst thing to do is to just come in and automatically do what you did yesterday. Yes. And you kind of need to always be thinking about not just inertia. You know, you have a limited time on Earth, so. So what is the biggest impact thing you could do? And if you just are doing the exact same thing you did yesterday, then you're probably not thinking about it hard enough in some sense. And that's why I've always thought of myself as lazy, because I just, you know, <laughs> I just want, you know, an, it's easy to get in a rut. comfortable pair of slippers, <laughs> a good chair, <laughs> and something on TV. That's really... Unreal. That's what you want to watch. As I'll watch that. He said yeah. for hot chocolate and you know a blanket. So. I'm not, you know, and that and uh, and then I look at people like Larry Page and I just feel terrible. It's like this you guy, know, he does not yeah. think that way. It's a responsibility of a generation too. I, I'm, right, this week I'm brainwashing our entire class of 110 students at our our new class at, at CUNY, and and I, and I love doing this, and I hope that I'm I'm giving some value. But what I keep pushing them to do is saying you, you're you got you guys have to invent the future. I'm too old. It ain't happening. Yeah. We were doing what we did in we the past. We blew it. Our generation blew you it. You have to question. And so what I do is spend all this time getting them to understand why we do stuff the way we do it so they can question it. So they can say, well, that's a dumb way to do that. Yeah. Why, you know, there's no reason to keep doing it that way. What's our, 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 our first principle? What's our real goal here? And reconsider it from the ground up. And and that, and I say, you know, you, you if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. So it's your job, man. You got to do this. <sighs> okay, I, that's enough. I mean, we don't have to belabor it. I just, it's fascinating. What we do is belabor things. <laughs> <It's special. laughs> All right, let's talk about this Amazon thing. Because I, I, I have to say, this there seems to be an, a, a continuing trend at the New York Times mm -hmm. to pursue an agenda, to not try to get things right, but often to get things wrong. Um, to It almost is, it feels like it's turning into the Wall Street Journal to me. Jeff, is that true? That's what I worry about. I, I admire and love the New York Times. Uh, I think there's a great deal. I'm, I'm unhappy about their Hillary Clinton coverage. Okay, that's politics. The story that they messed up. I've been happy about some other things recently. But the Amazon story, I read, I'm sure you all saw it on Monday, this huge, long story, just torturous detail about, about working at Amazon. And I had the same reaction everybody I know had at first was, Oh, crap. Oh, that's no place to work. Yeah, and we believed, I initially believed it because, of course. I, I believe it too. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I have, you know, for the individual anecdotes, and that's the point, it's all anecdotal. It right. is entirely anecdotal. For the individual anecdotes, I have no doubt that those individual anecdotes are, are, are well reported from their sources. But as I thought about it, my first thing, I, I tweeted and I did a joke and I thought, you know, well, let's think about what it's like to work in newsrooms where you work ridiculously long hours and people abuse you. But you also have a lot of passion for what you do, and um, and 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 you get you know rotten treatment. Um, so what's the difference? And I thought, well, how many places are are, are like that? Work's not wonderful. Uh, every the world isn't Google, um, the world isn't Facebook, and Amazon's more like the real world than the rest. So as I thought about this, and then and then of course, a a rebuttal from a an engineer at at Amazon came out very lengthy. I loved it because it was really, really, you could tell this guy's really a corporate guy. Uh, my favorite verb was about how we're going to action things. 
Um, so he talks like a corporate guy and, and, and said, this is not the Amazon I know. I've been there a year and a half. I haven't seen people crying at their desks. I didn't see abuse. If, if, if they saw the abuse, I think they'd do something about it. So I wrote about this journalistically saying my problem with the story in the end was this, that it didn't have enough context, number one, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but balance. I don't mean the Fox fair and balanced way, but context, what I mean by context is how does this compare to other workplaces? You're writing this whole thing about how Amazon is this horrible thing. Well, how is it really worse from working for Goldman Sachs? Then balance is, okay, so you found all this bad stuff. The only good things are said by hand-picked people given to them by Amazon, and they are obviously discounted the way this is written because, hey, those are the corporate stooges. I find it difficult to believe that in their, in their six months of reporting, interviewing 100 people, they found no one who likes working there, no one who really pushed back very hard against this, if they had shown more of that and if they had left it to me as the reader to decide whether Amazon's an awful place to be That's or not. That's journalism. That would be journalism. So there are things that I think are, are obviously worrisome about this piece. It's uh, yellow the journalism. Of someone coming up with, you know, coming back, to, forced back from work after a miscarriage and, and, and being forced to make a trip. And that, if that happened, then, then yes, that's awful. But is that systemic in the whole company? I have no evidence by which to judge. A system of anonymous feedback about people, uh, whether or not it's used well or awfully, I would find that abhorrent. I, I, I can't stand anonymity in a workplace. I think that's just awful. You know, be, every every system can be gamed. So I'll I'll count that on the By the on way, the Jeff Bezos' response said, if you if you know of this, please use that system. <laughs> Tell us who's being who's making people cry. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he right. didn't deny that that system existed. No, so he said I don't want that to see that spread elsewhere. So the times could have been better. The next day they put in a story basically giving the context and saying, "Oh yeah, a lot of other workplaces are really crappy too." Then Margaret Sullivan, who is the magnificent, wonderful, brilliant uh, ombudsman or public editor of the Times, uh, wrote a piece. And, of course, she's brilliant because she agreed with me. I was just going to say, she uh, she quotes you and says he's right. She, and and said this this didn't go far enough. This wasn't good enough. Right. And and so it's 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 to me profoundly disappointing when our pinnacle of journalism does something like this. And yeah, I think it is to an extent. It's not yellow. Won't go that far. But 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 the Times this is an important thing for business. We're talking to the students it's, about. It's, then I'll stop. It's more polemic than reporting, though. It's more yes, taking it a point of well, view. I always say, look at the business model. And and no, one of the things I did say, by the way, is that they should have been clearer about the disclosure that. Bezos owns their primary competitor, the Washington Post, who many say is jumping up on the Times. I do not believe for a second that the New York Times did this as, a, as an agenda against Bezos and the Post. But some people there do have a, 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 a Jones for Amazon. They've been doing other uh, overly tough reporting on Amazon as far as I'm concerned. This, the paper allowed this to go in. My last point is this. The paper is now supported in, in majority by subscription, by the public who buys it. And people think, well, that's good because advertising corrupts. Well, we have pretty good systems for keeping advertising walled off from influencing us. But when we want to appeal to the public, we end up doing things that I think, yes, do tend toward the sensational. And this isn't a headless body found in a topless bar, but in a sense, it's a New York Times version of that. So the nail salon story was very good too, but they're trying to go for, and I've been there, I know the business. When you try to push up your circulation and push up your numbers, you try to get the stories that are really going to grab people. Yeah. And they tried to grab them with Amazon, and I think it went too far. Now, having said all that, I'm really eager to hear Matt's perspective on this, having worked at a tech company. Don't expect to talk about that one, Matt. But just what's the view of people working in tech companies and how hard they work? I'm done. Oh, man, that's a great question. I mean, Google, uh, what's interesting is I remember the cultural shift from the early days of the startup to the days when people didn't come in on the weekends anymore because I came in one weekend and I was like, wait, where There's is no everybody? One here. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, what's this is, oh, we can we, work, we don't have to work on the weekends anymore, you know. But but Google from the beginning was always a very polite, very consensus-driven place. You'd, you'd occasionally have, you know, somebody would, would get into a, a rumble, but – it was very rare, and people would apologize and try to make way for everybody else's feelings. So um, it's interesting to read how Amazon, of course, you got a lot of hardworking people, but also this, uh, you know, and maybe Microsoft has a little bit as well. People will sort of have it out a little bit or try to come to uh, the right decision through so Socratic discussion or maybe arguments or, or maybe, you know, uh, kind of verbal combat. But um, 
I, I sort of I've talked to a few Amazon employees and and I think there might be a kernel of truth in the New York Times story, mm-hmm. but I think a, a larger part of it might also be that there's probably a trend in which you know uh, probably a few years ago some of the things in the New York Times article might have held more true, but it sounds like Amazon has been trying to do better about not burning out their employees and just churning through people and having people stay for a year or two or three and then leave. So, you know, it's, it's like the uh, parable of the, the blind men all touching an elephant and they're all seeing different or they're all touching different parts. You know, one touches the task and one touches the, the, the scales. And so they all are, are sort of it's too big for any one person to necessarily accomplish uh, to understand completely. One thing I want to um, mention, because we talked about the story on uh, Sunday as well on Twit, is that the Amazon employee, uh, Nick uh, Chubatario, who wrote the LinkedIn piece uh, saying, I've never seen any of this, said in the piece that I tried to say this in a comment in the Times story, and I w- the comment was moderated out, which sounded like a smoking gun, frankly. Well, did you see? Well, so, so Margaret Sullivan addressed that. Exactly. Go ahead. And it was a ridiculous response, I thought, because it's saying that, well, he just... He just said a little bit, then oh, linked to his piece. I, I don't know if that's the case. I think I kind of understand that. Um, B- Bassi Atim, who is in charge of the comment moderation, said uh, mostly it was just a link to his piece. With I do that all the time, Leo. I do that all the time where I'll see something on Facebook and somebody will say, I just did it yesterday. It was about the Facebook piece. Somebody said, well, what about Facebook? Um, Roger Black, a big designer. Says about Facebook. I said, "Well, here, Roger, here's what I had to. I, I, yeah, I, I thought that at first too, but I ended up changing my mind. Here's what I had to say. Boom, click and link. Okay. Why should I reproduce the entire thing there? Yeah, uh, I think that's a, you know this is the, the they the said and it's, it, it may be more of a policy, well, and, and no, you could debate the policy. They said if the, there had been a substantial commentary that, with the link, it would have been posted. I see, I, I, that that fundamentally misunderstands the architecture of the web. And, and that's Links, possible that the Times did that. that. I just, I, I think the point is that you can't impute it to malevolence or no, no, a, no, no, a no, slant. No, no, old-fashioned but, thinking. But but certainly you can impute it to just not getting it. <laughs> yeah, somebody should have somebody should have clicked on that link yeah. as a news judgment. You should have clicked on that as a news judgment and right. said, oh man, people will want to read this. Right. And in fact, I would argue that at least digitally, you don't just leave it in the comment, you put it up the top saying, wow, here's some important stuff that happens. So the Times came back today... And they did another follow-up piece, quoting from from comments uh, on their site, and I think also at Hacker News, where there was a huge discussion and so on. But again, it was front-loaded completely with slam, 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 slam. Oh, by the way, a few good things. Yeah. And it really just doesn't look good for the journalism of the Times. And that is what upsets me, because the the story, I I think Matt's right. There are kernels in there that I fully believe. Um, But I don't think it, 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 for six months and 100 interviews and all that, it wasn't diligent enough in its journalism. Well, good news. Uh, according to The Onion, Jeff Bezos assures Amazon <laughs> employees that HR will be working 100 hours a week to address their complaints. This is the greatest. <laughs> so that's a relief. They're taking this very seriously. Read the la- the kicker, too. Yeah. Uh, Jeff says, I heard your grievances. I promise HR is toiling 16 hours a day plus weekends until the problem is solved. Bezos adds, any employee not fully committed to ensuring a healthy work-life balance should look for a job elsewhere. (laughs) Our HR staff will continue to work their fingers to the bone, not seeing their families or friends or anything at all outside the offices for as long as it takes to make this right. So I I feel like uh, Amazon's addressed this. You know, I bet there's truth to both sides, but I also think it's a startup, and that's not unusual. It's a 10-year-old startup, 15-year-old startup, but... Uh, more power to Jeff if he wants uh, people to take it seriously yeah. and work as hard as they can. Um, well, Matt, and if I'm prying, please, please tell me to go. Pry well. away. <laughs> you worked really, 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 really hard. For the first few it's, years, anyway. Well, no matter what. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So was... is, this, is this whole leave thing that leaves us all befuddled is that kind of trying to like That's catch your up reward. on your reward? Yeah, it's but it's not just reward. Is it also kind of say try to re, re reset your balance? Uh, I am trying to recalibrate a little bit because uh, you know whenever we, I, I went from grad school straight to Google, and at the time my my girlfriend, we I got married three weeks before I joined Google. I you know my wife and I agreed let's try Google for four or five years, 
And at some point you turn around and it's been 14, 14 and a half, 15 yeah. years. And yeah. you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's not work-life balance. That's work, 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 and no life and no balance. And so uh, it is an attempt to try to get a little bit better balance that way. Yeah. What you're also seeing, by the way, is the, is the university heritage of Google. You, Jeff, you know about sabbaticals. Uh, universities do this routinely after seven years. You I'm get a stupid. Year I off. haven't done one. Yeah. Wait, are you probably way overdue for your sabbatical? I am. I yeah. am. Um, in fact, Ziff Davis had sab a sabbatical part of policy as well. After, uh, uh, I think it was after seven years, you get a year uh, to pursue whatever you want. Wow. Um, and I thought that was really good. I mean, they try to encourage you to pursue, or maybe it wasn't a year, maybe I'm inflating it, but uh, they encourage you to pursue something that will make you a better employee when you return. Paid? Yeah, I think it was paid. Oh. Our sabbat sabbaticals are paid, right? Yeah, 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 ours are. So I, I mean, ours are, are if, if I do it, I think for a year I'm paid at, at, at not at full, right. full rate. But that's the genesis of that. That's a very common thing in, universe, in, in academia. M is marshmallow. M is for the many things she... It's marshmallow. Bush to me. Does that mean anything, that, that it's marshmallow? It means that they didn't get a deal with Mars bars? What does it mean? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It means that's the name. No. Oh. But we did see this. have a lot this. of s'mores, yeah. Does it, well, how important are those statues on the uh, lawn at Google? Is that something uh, everybody pays attention to? I bet you an email circulates. They're putting the statue up tomorrow. I, I think people... They enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they have a lot of fun with the marshmallow and all the other statues that they do. I have to say my favorite part of uh, Android M is the app permissions because for the first time you don't have to pre-approve a big laundry list of stuff not knowing what the app is going to do and whether you can trust the app. Instead, you, you can start to say, you know, open the app and then it wants to, if it wants to know your location, you can choose at that, that point awesome? whether to give you yeah, not. and if it, if you say no, then they have to decide how to get around or not get around, but how to deal with that fact, and uh, and so it's just a much better permission model. Hopefully, uh, I'll, you know, every every app developer should be paying attention to this and uh, working on getting ready for the new M release. One of the that's one of the weird things about this uh, one plus two and the lollipop. Uh, there, it's pretty pure five one one, but there is a section in the settings app permissions. So they're taking a page from uh, Android six. And they do warn you, you know, if you turn on, this is, this is the, you know, unapproved version, but you can turn off some of these permissions. And they say you may break the app, but you go have at it. <laughs> have here's, fun. here's the marshmallow video. The statue revealed. Google does this every, uh, every update. There's Cupcake. There's Kit Kat. There's something under a, a, a beautiful... By the way, last time when they did this with Kit Kat, didn't we see the Nexus 6? Look carefully. Well, that's right. Somebody... somebody that's was right. That's <laughs> Look right. Look carefully. There's the... Oh, it's a little robot with a marshmallow. Now, I mean, take a look at the marshmallow and then the body of the Android. It so could have easily been the body of the Android. Oh, Why yeah, not? You Missed opportunity. It was a marshmallow. Yeah, I know. Oh, look, Maybe it could be somebody, holding a bowl of little marshmallows. Huh? What's what's the marshmallow man in uh, Ghostbusters? <laughs> stay, stay puffed. Oh, it yeah, should somebody, have been Stay Puffed. Somebody did um, an Android man dressed up as Stay Puffed. Oh, that would Perfect. be good. Yeah. Or and Android probably would not get permission from whoever owned yeah. Ghostbusters, though, like right. Sony or something. It does. Uh, somebody says, somebody the new said movie. in the chat room, it's interesting. Uh, Cheeto says that it's interesting. It's 6.0 and not 5.2. Right. What does yeah. that say? Does that mean, uh, is that a major revision as opposed to a minor revision? <laughs> it either means a lot or absolutely yeah. nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, you know, what What you said, Matt, as far as the permissions uh, aspect. That's really interesting. That's a pretty significant change, I'm so I'm sure that's phones. kind of part of it. But yeah, we were talking about this last night on All About Android about how the major point updates in in you know previous history seem to be tied to very obvious visual changes to the Android OS and this time and then the the incremental changes seem to be like refining on the underneath I so like, this is uh, a little bit different than that but uh, personally I mean if you're rolling out a major update a year why not just bump it up a, a, a version like you know it's it's less confusing that way what would you know what would windows six, do? next year's seven yeah. I don't know yeah, you no, can skip not? a number just arbitrarily for no reason. Just, <laughs> yeah. make, make people, just go to 10. Make Everybody's on 10 these days. Yeah, so let's just crazy. jump to 10. I'm looking. There's a lot of... Uh, it looks like there's some Nexus 6s in Phi cases. That's a Phi case right oh, yeah. there. Uh, that looks like an LG. 
That's an iPhone, clearly, another iPhone. There's, of course, we don't even know if these are all Google. There are they all Google employees, or, or they just they could be random people in Mountain View. I don't know. Well, yeah, I've I've I've, I've played tourist with with. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to miss it. Are you kidding? That's a great. Uh, they're all the phones. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't see a new phone. Okay. <laughs> we do have uh, leaked. They must have. We have leaked Nexus Five stuff. Oh, it's uh, only a leak. You probably talked about. It. I don't want to repeat too much of what you did on all about Android because you do such a good job with Android. And thanks. We're not um, just Android. We have other things we can talk about. So. Yeah. Like, yes, we are. We are seeing plenty of Nexus leaks. Whether they are real or right. not right. remains to be seen. But so, we're totally in Nexus leak uh, territory on your, the calendar. Is year. your advice to Jeff to not get one of these other new phones, but to hold out? <sighs> Uh, I don't know. You can always wait. It, like, you can wait forever, I guess, is yeah. my advice as far as that's concerned. Not one of my great skills there. You know? No, exactly. Um, you know, <laughs> so if, if you feel the need to buy something right now, hey, guess what? There's a lot of really good stuff I don't out need, right I have now. I a perfectly good, wonderful, magnificent phone right here. God, that's that's annoying. I do want my buy. So I want to do that. Yeah. But I, I just, here's the thing. If I, if, I, if I went out and I spent, because the other problem I have is I think to test a lot of things, I, I bought, you know, my iPod Nano yeah, or what it was called. An nobody. <laughs> get an iPhone. That's ridiculous. Well, and, and I can't do some things. Yeah, you got to get an so iPhone. I, I have my old iPhone. It's not doing it. But I, no, I don't want an iPhone. Get an iPhone because you're going to get on Google um, and Facebook mentions. I, I and then you want to stream pictures of your kitty. And I don't use it. Mm. And so. Yeah, I'm right. excited about the Moto X. So that's coming out September 3rd. That That's the question: one. Is do I buy? So, so, but then mm -hmm. if I, but you won't be able to use Fi with it, right? Yeah, three night. No, you can't use Fi with that. Well, we don't know. We don't even know Maybe if the eventually. Nexus Five will be Fi uh, compatible. Yeah, I'm know? sure the new Nexus is. I would have to imagine they're going to do that. But maybe they don't want that many customers. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe true. <laughs> it's a good way to make sure your your new service that you're really excited about doesn't go anywhere. But what do you think uh, about Comcast's watchable platform, <laughs> Jeff? Oi. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Comcast has decided that it's going to launch a major video platform called Watchable to rival Facebook and Google. One little difference. You have to have a Comcast Cast X1 cable set-top box to watch it. Jeez. So it's not, a, it's not on the Internet. Well, but let me ask you this. Is, is this a platform you want Twig to be on? I would imagine Twig Well, I, you know, I love our shows to be everywhere. In fact, we're on yes. TiVo. People can use TiVo to get it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if they called me and said, would you like to be on here? I'd say yes, but it's not. The thing is, if it's not on the internet, is it important? <laughs> is, did you see the most recent statistics on cord cutting? <laughs> Whoa. It is not good for these Never guys. Never mind Michael Wolf, who says television is the new television. Uh, 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 no. Uh, let me see if I can find, there it is. That's the graph. Um, this is... <laughs> This is from wow. a Business Insider. The scariest chart in the history of cable. <laughs> uh, cable TV subscribers are actually plummeting, um, especially in the last year. It's suddenly gone. The year-to-year -year growth has suddenly gone negative as of the fourth quarter 2014. Uh, this is it's this is not good. It is it is a down down down, and I'm just kind of surprised because there's no real financial advantage to cord cutting. In the long run, it seems like you'd have to pay a lot for internet access plus you know channel by channel access. But boy, people just penetra household penetration of cable down from 88 percent in 2010 to 80 uh, percent in the last quarter. So, so Google's attacked this this horrible business model with fiber. If you look at business models that are that are based on imprisonment, the other thing I want is Google Air. Uh, by that I mean an airline. Really? Um, <laughs> yo, I'd kill for it because they treat us decently. They would figure yeah. out that we have value. We're valuable people in there. We have information and there's other things. Um, uh, I wrote about a googly airline and what would Google do? Uh, but I think that the, that the cable business is also just, we resent it so much, given the chance to escape. I think that's what a lot of this is. It's not People to save do. money. It's just, I hate you. I just hate them. Yeah. Uh, and wearable is their response. Well, what if we... <laughs> what if uh, your set-top box had video on it? 
they are going to give content creators 70% of ad revenue. But uh, that's taking a bigger chunk than uh, we give. So uh, that's the problem I'd have with it. And I bet you they wouldn't let us put our own ads on there, right? Ooh, right. Here's a couple of short good news. Some happy news. Yeah. Uh, the FCC is fining um, uh, Smart City, which does the Wi-Fi at, at uh, conventions. Smart City, which charges $80 a day to, to get Wi-Fi at a convention, Jesus. had been blocking personal mobile hotspots to force you to use their Wi-Fi. FCC said that's a no-no. $750,000 fine. It's Yay. the second time they've done this. Remember, they went after Marriott for doing the same thing and reached a $600,000 settlement uh, for doing kind of the same thing, uh, interrupting uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi at uh, their conference facilities in Nashville. The FCC has said why, unequivocally, Wi-Fi blocking is prohibited. You may not block Wi-Fi. Uh, well, I, uh, according to Smart City, we always acted in good faith. We had no prior notice the FCC considered the use of this standardized, available out-of-the-box technology to be a violation of its rules. Eighty dollars a day. <laughs> just, just evil. Drew Fark, I mean, sorry, Drew Curtis, the uh, <laughs> creator of Fark, and a good friend of uh, of mine, and uh, he used to be on a, a tech TV on a regular basis is running for governor of Kentucky, and he made the ballot. That's very cool. <sighs> it's kind of like having Moot be so there's president. There's only three people on the ballot in Kentucky. Yeah, and he I'm has a fellow Kentuckian, so I'm really excited Oh, really? Oh, you this. are. And, uh, you know, so he's actually going to... Yeah, I, I grew up in eastern Kentucky, you know, and, uh, and uh, Drew is a governor scholar, and I'm a Kentucky governor scholar, oh, and neat. so... Uh, you know, we, we talk about, isn't it great that Larry does all this great stuff and Sergey and, you know, Larry Ellison do all this great stuff. But I think it's really cool to realize that re everyday regular tech entrepreneurs and, you know, concerned citizens can can actually make a pretty big difference, too. And so Drew is on the ballot. So he's got 5000 signatures. He's been certified by the secretary of state or whoever. And uh, he will be in the next debate. And so, you know, in case you think that you can't make a difference. He's registered as an independent, and his so he's awesome. actually polling pretty well, considering that he hasn't even really started any advertising yet. So it's it's pretty exciting. If you're a Kentuckian, you might go check it out. Tell your friends about it. Let's uh, let's see if we can get a tech savvy governor going. You know, oh, that's so great. It is so wonderful. At Curtis for Governor, if you want to follow uh, the Twitter account of the campaign, and uh, DrewCurtis.com. And this site is drewcurtis.nationbuilder.com, where he's uh, doing the fundraising. I guess Heather's his wife. I don't know. She's running for lieutenant governor. Maybe they just maybe they just have the same name. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that must be his wife. This is up there with Kiki Friedman running for the governor of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think this is a joke. I think oh. Drew's very serious about this, so good for you, Drew. So that's a happy one. Um... And another happy one, uh, because we are big fans of Jerry Ellison. She's been here many times showing off, Jerry Ellsworth, I'm sorry, showing off her uh, really interesting inventions. She's always stopping by to show us pinball games and things. You may remember the last time she was here, she showed us a really cool augmented reality system, Cast AR. She had uh, developed it at uh, Steam when she was working there. She told the story of how uh, when she and her uh, partner... Uh, we're told that uh, by uh, Gabe Newell that the steam was going to kill the project. Jerry, she's very gutsy, said, well, can I have it? And Gabe said, yeah. So they spun it out. They just took it off. They started a cast AR. Really cool. Uh, originally called Technical Illusions. Uh, Jerry and Rick were here. Rick Johnson were here. To, her partner were here to show it off. Uh, we should dredge that up because they've just received... A uh, very significant investment, not just money, but support from Andy Rubin, former Android in, you know guy, the guy who created Android, joined Google when Google bought Android, and only recently uh, moved on from Google. He's invested $15 million, but Jerry and Rick are quick to say it's a lot more than that. When you got Andy Rubin saying, this is a real technology, this is going to take off, that is important. So nice work, Jerry. We're very, very happy. There you go. That's me trying a proto very early prototype, glue gun prototype. 
<laughs> of the cast air yeah. goggles. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. This is AR, not VR. AR. So what happens is you have to put down a, um, uh, a special screen, and you can see 3D games on it, 3D Jenga. You can. It, it's very cool, and you still see the world around you. And unlike Microsoft's uh, HoloLens, you have a full field of view. Uh, the key, the game is on this uh, piece of uh, uh, on this is on this fabric. What you're seeing is not anywhere near what it looked like to me. It was very vivid to me. Uh, that's uh, triangulation episode 124. Wow, almost two years ago now. Good job, Jerry. I love hey. love Jerry Ellsworth. Uh, really glad she's doing well. And uh, you know what? I I, I uh, bookmarked this because I just think this is an important article to read by Matthew Green, who is one of the great crypto guys. He's really become, I think Matthew in many ways has become the voice of crypto and security. Uh, he's at Johns Hopkins. Uh, and this, uh, in the light of the article uh, that was uh, published by ProPublica and the New York Times about how happy and willing at t was to cooperate with the uh, National Security Agency in giving information, including wiretapping the entire UN for the NSA, um, he wrote a really good blog post saying, you know what, <laughs> the network is hostile. Anyone who has taken a network security class, he writes, knows the first rule of internet security is there is no internet security. There's only one solution. We've said this time and time again, end-to-end -end encryption, but that's hard. And even if you do achieve 100% encryption, metadata leaks a lot of information. So, um, you know, he says this, this NSA AT&T story, yet another Snowden revelation. We kind of knew this, didn't we? And, um, it, you know, he says, if you believe that uh, someday a large portion of the world's traffic will flow through government networks, not just our own, but China and other governments, and some of those governments hostile to the core values of Western democracy... Uh, then the answer isn't going to involve legislation or politics. The NSA won't protect us through cyber retaliation. If you're concerned about the future, the answer is to finally truly believe our propaganda about network trust. We need to learn to build systems today that can survive such an environment. It's a good article. Highly recommend it. Matthew Green's uh, blog is on blogger. Blog.cryptographyengineering.com. The network is hostile. He wrote it on Sunday. Let's take a break, and uh, when we come back, tips, tools, tricks, ideas, thoughts. I'll give you a little tour of the uh, one plus two. I finally got it all set up and running. Our show today brought to you by Smart Things. We love Smart Things. You'll love Smart Things too. They are great. They made it easier than ever to turn your home into a smart home, and they've got some great stuff coming. I'm really excited. Smart Things is all about intelligent living if you've dabbled with home automation in the past you know not just expensive but frankly complicated each system as it is proprietary each with their own user experience you end up having dozens of different apps on your phone for your lights and your locks and your garage and everything else smart things changes all that the smart things hub is a centralized hub that controls lights locks, security through a single app, whether on iOS or Android or Windows Phone, it's an open platform. So they have their own sensors, lots of them, but they also work with connected devices from many other companies, including Drop, Dropcam, Schlage Locks, Honeywell Thermostats. Editor's Choice Award at CES this year. Smart Things is amazing. And stay tuned because Smart Things is getting smarter and smarter all the time. You're going to really be happy. Uh, with your investment in smart things, it just makes your house smarter. And it's and it's not over yet. Smartthings.com slash twig. You'll get 10% off any featured smart things kit. Use the offer code TWIG. Great way to get started with the smart things hub. And use a kit to, you know, do security or monitor for moisture, that kind of thing. All sorts of stuff. Smartthings.com slash twig. Browse around, pick the kit you want, then save 10% off and get free shipping in the U.S., when you use the offer code TWIG. We love smart things. I'm very excited about the future with smart things, and I want you to take a look. Smartthings.com slash TWIG. So, 
Anything cool in your life, Matt Cutts? You know, I had a, a very strange experience recently, which was my niece came up to me and she said, Matt, I want to write an app. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Whoa. man, I really haven't prepared for this. And so the tip or the tool that I would recommend is App Inventor 2. So if you just search for App Inventor, it's it's uh, started at Google, but now it's at MIT, and they're doing a fantastic job with it. And I didn't realize this, but you, you can now do it where you can make a, draw, a drag and drop app, and it works pretty well, and you can install the app on an Android phone using a helper app. And you don't actually have to, you know, if you're like me, you might have tried to set it up with Android Studio and Java and, you know, ADB and all these kinds of things. And I spent like three days trying to get the environment just <laughs> right. Too. And instead, <laughs> now in less than an hour, I had a little tiny app, you know, it's a button, you know, which she put a German Shepherd on it. And you can say pet the dog and... Oh, you know, that's cute. And, huh. So Android uh, uh, App Inventor has this thing. It's called Hello Purr, and they start with a cat, and it and it you know sort of meows whenever you press this button, which is a picture of a cat. And she changed it to a dog because she likes German shepherds. And so you know, in less than an hour, we were sitting together. I did the first little bit to make sure it worked, and then she took over and changed the dog, you know, the cat pictures and meow to a dog picture and a bark. And it's it's pretty incredible. It's so gratifying. You know, she was like showing it to people and she was planning what her next app was going to be. And I was just like, I could just feel like Gina Trapani just like, sh you know, smiling at me, <laughs> you know, across the internet. Spelling, as we say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we grew up, it was all Commodore 64s and Go2 and Peek and Poke. And now kids want to write an app. And so App Inventor is a great little way to start trying to do that. That's great. I, I, I want Uncle Matt, too. You want to <laughs> you want to see how easy it is to do? Because I actually wrote... I just like you, Matt. Except this was for me. I wanted to write a countdown timer for my radio show. I'd written one before in Apple Script, and I thought oh, it'd be good to have it on a uh, a mobile app. And uh, so I wrote it. And it, what you do is you design, as you know, you design the user interface first. You're in the designer, and then you go over to blocks and you write your code. There's your code, and uh, it's very easy. Yeah, give me the time, but it's very easy. I'll show you how to. So you get the app inventor app on your um, the companion app on your Android device, and then you can connect it. So I'm going to say uh, connect to the AI companion, and it gives you a QR code. I'm going to enter in that code right now. I don't know if I should show this on the air. Is this going to is this going to everybody going to be using app. my app now? I don't know. And I'll uh, I can scan the QR code, or I can uh, let's scan it here, make it easy. And then uh, it's entering the code, and then let's connect. And now App Inventor on the screen, When I, what is, what's cool about that, so there's the app. And then if you make a change to the app, it immediately changes on your um, phone. Wow. Uh, so you get instant feedback. You know, I'm, I'm actually, this is the app here running on my device because I tied the two together. That's a pretty simple app, and it's not going to let you to write, you know, the next uh, Gmail inbox, but it's going to, it gives you some some real capabilities. What this one does is it knows what time it is. It knows how many seconds are left before my commercial break, and it can, it reminds me, it blinks in front of me uh, during the radio show when I should shut up. You'll see in about 10 seconds, it's going to blink uh, yellow at me saying, you've only got 30 seconds left, and then it blinks red saying, you've got 10 seconds left. And then just says, shut up. <laughs> it's very, it's well, very easy. You're absolutely right, Matt. Easy enough that a kid can get great satisfaction out of it right away. And for a kid to see the, to see these things running um, is, uh, you know, so quickly and easily is really exciting for them. Well, even a year or two ago, it was pretty wild because, you know, you'd have to plug in a USB card and it's you'd have to so do a easy. lot of installation. Yeah. And now the fact that you can do QR codes yeah. just makes it so much easier and the gratif gratification is right there. And for me, that's the main thing is it, it's enough to get them hooked where they're like, oh, I want to do that a little bit more. Commercial breaks over. We are now in the show and it went green. And that's how many seconds before the next commercial break. And so it's it's very simple. But boy. Actually, this is really incredibly useful. It's really fantastic. The other thing I love about it, you can see the plug-and-play uh, interface. It's fairly simple to learn. And this is how a lot of programming environments for kids work. Scratch, um, you know, uh, Alice. Uh, so they get, they're going to see this in school, too, these kinds of uh, modules. And there's, really, there's a lot of them. I agree with you. This is just a, a really fantastic tool.
even for grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, totally free. You know, I, I was like, she had an she had an iPhone, and I was like, oh, do I have to pay ninety nine dollars so she can write an app? And instead, you know, in <laughs> so, under an hour, she's happy. Oh, this works great. on an iPhone too. Well, I think this only works on Android. I but so, when yeah. I was, I thought about how, what do you have to do to write? And it oh, turns it's out a lot still, harder on an iPhone. There's nothing like this. Yeah, yeah. unless you jailbreak your iOS device. Right. Now this is really neat and. Yeah, it was developed at Google, so kudos to Google, and thank you, MIT, for taking it over. And I know there are a lot of uh, curricula, uh, school curricula that use this uh, as a teaching tool. It's really good. Jeff, you have a number for us? Uh, yes. Google went public 11 years ago today, and the oh, stock wow. is up over 1,500%. Do you remember that day, Matt? I do remember that day. <laughs> you probably remember <laughs> it pretty well. Yeah. Um, I, you know... But the nice thing is, you know, they did the Dutch auction, so anybody could get in at the IPO price, and it's gone up pretty well since then. So. Google's such innovators. They even innovated on the IPO, didn't they? Yeah. Pretty cool. So the other number I want is 30. What's your 30-day challenge, Matt? Oh, uh, my 30-day challenge is uh, there's an article in the New York Times about it. Uh, it's called 30 20 10 intervals you you run normally for 30 seconds and then you sort of jog a little faster for 20 and then you run full out as hard as you can for 10 seconds oh. and then you loop back around and you throw and up. you do that and that's oh. that's a five minute cycle and then you do that three times so in like 15 minutes you get yourself a crazy hard you know your heart is just like pounding workout um and so far this is not my favorite 30 day challenge <laughs> <laughs> Even compared to cold showers, I'm not yeah. really a fan of this one so far, but yeah. it's okay. No, they say this is the best intense brief workouts are the way to do it. You want to really stress your body, in effect. Yes, uh, high interval intense or high intensity interval training. High intensity really cool. interval training. There's an app uh, that will do this uh, for Android from Johnson and Johnson of all people called the Seven Minute Workout. That is the original uh, high intensity uh, training. So they they it's seven minutes. Of course, you're mm -hmm. supposed to do it like more than once, but you don't have to. <laughs> and uh, and it and and it gives you the timers and tells you what to do. And if you mm -hmm. really want to make yourself sick, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it it the point is it's not fun, but according to the studies, it actually really really helps yeah. in terms of cardio, fitness, and all sorts of stuff. You can either run for two hours, or you can do 12 minutes of hell. Right. And it turns wow. out 12 minutes, even though you procrastinate, is still better and right. faster. And, all that good stuff. Yeah, this app is free, and I and I really like it. It's called. Uh, let's see. I think the, it's from. How do you Johnson. time yourself, Matt? Uh, I I literally count to ten three times, and then I count wow. to ten two times, and it's actually nice because then you count to ten, you know, one more time, and that's when you're doing full out, and uh, it distracts you. Like right. a forty minute or a thirty minute workout is done before you know it. Uh, you just have to make sure you don't run so hard you give yourself shin splints or something as a result. Right. So uh, oh, yeah, good, 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 good. Uh, that's a good 30-day challenge. Good. <laughs> good. It's a good 30-day challenge. It's a good, yeah. well, you, you, now, what is your commitment to yourself? Do you, if you say, you know, after day 10, I'm done, do you have to, like, uh, put money in a kitty or anything? What do you, how do you punish yourself? No. <laughs> well, if it's a normal challenge, like you're supposed to meditate and you miss a day, I'll normally just tack that on to the end of the 30-day ah, challenge. So good. sometimes I'm doing a couple at once. Right. This one's weird because I, I normally am a slow runner and I, I haven't really been doing all out running. And so I actually am kind of giving myself shin splints. So I'm like, uh -oh. I, this today I did it as a bike instead of a run. Yeah. So I just, you know, I did it as, as a biking. Yeah, so, low impact. But, you, is... you know, there's, you can't take it too seriously. Yeah. You got to have a little bit of fun with it. So uh, my uh, tool is actually a couple of them. And you probably have some ideas since I've been talking about it the entire show. Two new phones. Both came in the last couple of days. Uh, I was a fan of the Samsung uh, Note series from day one. I've had I've owned every Note, the one, two, three, four, and now this is the Samsung Note Five. And uh, there's some changes here. First of all, they've they've abandoned the crap plastic back for a glass back, kind of like the iPhone. If you've if you played with the Samsung Galaxy S6, you'll recognize this immediately as being um, just kind of a, a giant version of this. It's 5.7 inches, very high-res screen. The battery is smaller than the Note uh, 4, which worried me a lot. And, of course, you're losing the SD card and removable battery. Uh, that's kind of scary. But I've gotten, uh, so far, pretty good battery life. You see, I haven't. I got up this morning at 6 a.m., and here we are uh, at local time, 3.30, and it's 76%. 
So that's that's a good sign. I'm uh, getting, I think about, yesterday I got about 16 hours. I think about 16 hours of battery life. That's Ooh. close to what I need to get uh, for me to consider a phone. If a phone only gets eight or nine hours, and a lot of the latest crop of Android phones do, that, that, that eliminates it. Of course, where this phone excels, much like the uh, Galaxy S6 is in the camera, it is easily the best camera. This and the S6, same same camera, OIS, um, 16 megapixels, incredible. This one adds one little feature. It shoots raw as well in the pro mode. So uh, you, this is this is the camera phone uh, that uh, if you're serious about uh, camera phone photography, this is the one. Also shoots 4K video, which the new iPhone is rumored to do. This one already does. It's uh, This is a beast. Um, and I, so far, I really, really like it. Fast. It doesn't have the hesitance that the S6 uh, Edge kind of started getting a little, uh, a little laggy for me, um, probably because it has four gigs of RAM. Um, so that's the Note 5. I'll have a full review uh, soon on Before You Buy. And then today, uh, this is an embarrassment of riches. This is the new OnePlus 2, which Jason also got, kind of similar to the old OnePlus 2. No NFC, which is weird. Uh, battery not removable, no SD card. I got the 64 gig version, and uh, as usual, you have to get through an invite process to get it. Uh, we were lucky, thanks to Jeff, that uh, we both got uh, invites. Jeff picked up a couple in the line at the announcement event. Screen, <laughs> you immediately see, is not nearly as good as the OLED screen on the uh, on the uh, Galaxy Note 4. I mean, uh, the Note 4 has the easily, you know, the, the S6 and the Note 4 have the best screens. Note 5, I should say, have the best screens on the market. They're just stunning OLED screens. This is only 1080p. It's not quad HD. It's uh, LCD. I think it's IPS. It's a little feels a little washed out. Frankly, the blacks aren't as black. The whites aren't as white. Uh, on the other hand, if I get better battery life, and I expect to, I got 20 hours on the One Plus One. I expect to get similar battery life on the One Plus Two. That may make up for it. Good fingerprint reader. Uh, really like that. Um, so, and it's a lot less. This is half as much as the Note Five. It's only, uh, it's under 400 bucks. That's there's a lot to be said for. Uh, that on the other hand uh, you may end up buying another one because support is almost non-existent for the one plus they do I uh, maybe they're, they're, they say they're gonna try to do better this time around but the one plus one a lot of people who had trouble with the one plus one were very unhappy with uh, support on that I forgot there's one other feature that makes the note 5 if the note 5 battery life is decent I'm gonna stick with the note 5 I think watch this the screens off this I is cool the pen I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not but I can still yeah, we see that right on the black screen, and wow. save it. I haven't turned it on. I just popped the pen. Um, also, I don't know if you know, but the, notice, but the latency is zero. So some some pen phones have not been great because you know there's a little lag. There's no lag here, and I can save that up. And now I have that note uh, for future reference. That's really cool because if you know you're you're in a bar and you meet an attractive uh, young person and you say. Well, let me get your number. Why you just pop that out and you can write five 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 one two one two, and you know the napkin will never get wet. <laughs> you will always have that number. Although you may shed a tear when you realize it's the number of the local directory assistants, not hers. Uh, so that's kind of a nice, nice it's kind feature. of a tip for that's, Ashley Madison users. Yeah, for Ashley Madison users. Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, this is definitely the phone. <laughs> Speaking of which, I don't know if you want the story or not, but I put up the perfect Gawker story on the rundown. Oh, uh, Gawker. Oh, uh, <laughs> Gawker. They, you, you nailed it. Gawker's got editorial yep. interns yep. searching through the database, and they've already found somebody. What a surprise. Man. I'm not, I'm not going to repeat it. I don't like no. Gawker. I got no Nick Denton. I hope he loses that hundred million dollar lawsuit to Hulk Hogan. <laughs> That's all I can say. Not my favorite person in the world. <sighs> that ends this fabulous edition. And Matt, it's so good to have you here. Isn't he we great? Always it. It's always so much fun to hang out with you all, and I really appreciate the chance to do it. Just go up to Petaluma and take your next job there. Yeah, come move here. <laughs> I can't promise you, you a put sabbatical. The Forgot. There's one more, one more happy story. You, you oh, know, good. you guys know Harper Reed. Yeah, this one is of my favorite happy. guys in the world. I love Harper Reed. He's quite a character. Met him at a food camp one year. He was the CTO of the Obama campaign in 2012. 
he and his partner, who was uh, like the guy who did the code for the campaign, started at the same time started something called Modest, which was an e-commerce startup in Chicago. Just got acquired by PayPal. Nice. And uh, Benedict, Benedict Evans from Andreessen Horowitz had a great tweet. He put up this picture you have on the screen now, two happily bearded guys, <laughs> and said, note to bankers, this is what financial services disruptors look like. Exactly. <laughs> you know, credit <laughs> to the Obama look campaign like for bankers. looking at these two and saying, yeah, yeah, we'll hire them. But Harper, mm -hmm. who's on the right, he's in the uh, crazy, he wears the greatest T-shirts and stuff. Um, he is a sweetheart, funny, super smart. And, uh, Great guy. And we just love him. And I don't know his I don't know his partner, but uh, he looks like he'd be a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Con congratulations to Modest Harper. Seems very happy about the acquisition. So, Dylan Richard is his uh, his partner. Uh, oh, and happy birthday to Nick Bilton, who's celebrating today and has a new baby. See, we end on a on a up happy though. note. None of those none of those downers Jarvis brings on. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good news. It's all good news as long as you're not in the <laughs> Ashley Madison database. <laughs> <laughs> hey matt cuts wonderful to have you thank you so much for being here continue to enjoy your time off mattcuts.com slash blog at matt cuts on twitter uh and come back anytime you want we love having you on appreciate it always a pleasure thanks thank you. matt keep running but not quite so fast <laughs> and jeff jarvis he's the guy at buzzmachine.com he is so important, even the New York Times public editor refers to him and agrees. That's how important this man is. you got to read his books, Public Parts, What Would Google Do, Gutenberg the Geek. You find them all on Amazon and better bookstores, if any exist in your neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Uh... And, uh, well, you know, Jeff, I couldn't. this show lives and breathes and lives and dies with you so uh stick no, around no, no it's 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 love we love being it. here thank you love being here we do twig every uh every wednesday it's kind of the last show of my week because i take thursday and friday off so it's my it's my friday and i love it 1 p.m pacific 4 p.m eastern uh that's 2000 utc come and tune in watch be in the chat room we love that but if you or in the studio we love that got some great people in the studio today email tickets at twit.tv we'll put a chair out for you but if you can't be here or be on uh, the air, then you can always get it on demand after the fact, as with all of our shows, twit.tv slash twig or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe because you don't want to miss a week. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time on Twig.